trail cameras are great for capturing local wildlife. However, sometimes they can capture things that people struggle to explain. Trial cameras work with the camera detecting motion. Once it does, it quickly snaps the photograph and then saves it, which means you can review it at another time. The owner of the camera will normally receive a notification once this happens. However, some owners have been left asking questions once they review the images, and one story was shared by a rancher who couldn't explain what their trial camera had captured. This trial camera was shared to various Bigfoot groups, and there were mixed reactions. Some said that what the rancher had captured didn't match any of the local wildlife, saying that it doesn't match a bear. Those within the group said that Bigfoot is one of the toughest cryptids to capture, so when examining these types of photographs people should remain skeptical. While others said that is a good example of Bigfoot, and that it doesn't match the typical wildlife that you'd expect to see on a trial camera. One person said the following. This photograph matches the typical description of a Bigfoot. It has a large brow ridge that many eyewitnesses have described seeing, and it also has ape-like eyes. Contrary to what most people believe, Bigfoot doesn't have much hair on its face. Most people who have detailed their encounter have said the facial features are quite easy to make out in these creatures. I think this trail cam photo shows a genuine photograph of a Bigfoot. End quote. Others though argued that it looked more human, with one person saying that it could have been someone who just so happened to look into the trial camera, but most who have seen the image have said it doesn't look like a human's face. One of the problems with these types of photographs is that they get shared to online groups, but no one can provide any further details about the photographs. This has led some to suggest that the majority of these are hoaxes. However, not everyone believes this, and states that the majority of people who catch these cryptids wish to remain anonymous. Bigfoot holds the title as being one of the most famous cryptids, Cryptids are creatures that are not recognised by science, with amateur researchers saying that although scientists don't believe they exist, so many people have reported them that further studies need to be conducted. Bigfoot over time has been used to refer to an ancient legendary creature, a giant human ape looking figure that's said to roam the dense forests of the Pacific Northwest. Over the years, thousands of people have come forward with their encounters, each one matching the previous witnesses. This in turn has caused some to think that there could be a giant undiscovered ape roaming our planet, and that it uses the thick forested regions to stay hidden. Scientists have claimed that the creature bearing resemblance to an ape is a human relative, which dates as far back as 15,000 years ago. Although all of this evidence and claims are yet to be proven, it's as if Bigfoot only selects a certain type of person to reveal itself to, because every scientific endeavour to prove their existence has ended up being a futile journey. There's also been a worrying amount of individuals that have gone missing in forested regions and national parks. Not only this, but individuals have claimed to have seen large humanoids and strange sounds while at these places, causing some to put forward the idea that they prefer to live in isolated places away from humans. Those that have seen Bigfoot have reported seeing footprints and even faces, which look like that of a human, but upon closer look at its features, it's evident that it's not a human. Another interesting photograph that was caught in a trial camera was shared back in May of 2020. The owner said they'd set up a motion camera as they get a lot of wildlife near their home. He soon received a notification that his camera had captured something, but when he opened up the image he couldn't explain what he was looking at. He said that his camera takes three shots in bursts of three seconds. Interestingly, in the last image, a strange orb-like object can be seen close to a tree stump. The owner couldn't understand what this object was, and so sent the image into MUFON which stands for the Mutual UFO Network. 
They are responsible for keeping a record of thousands of UFO sightings that get reported across the planet. And as of right now, they haven't given us an answer for what the man captured. But that hasn't stopped amateur researchers from putting forward their theories. One individual said the following. I find this photograph interesting as I've seen similar objects close to my property. I live out in Northern California and we have a lot of forests. I describe these objects as looking like balls of light. Every month or so I will see one out in the distance. They usually always give off a bright white colour. In some cases I've had them come close to my house and pulsate, almost as if they're inspecting around the property. This is still happening to this day, and I'm no closer to understanding what these objects are. End quote. Others who saw the image said it looked very similar to a UFO orb, with those that have researched this topic saying that these orbs are some of the most common UFOs that are witnessed. These glowing orbs come in a variety of different colours, ranging from blue, red, orange, yellow, pink, silver, green and black, and most people who have seen them have said they appear to pulsate. Eyewitnesses have said they make no noise, and are able to travel at extremely fast speeds. Some UFO researchers have said they've reminded them of drones. Interestingly, some have even said they can see a beam of light coming from the object. This is why it's been linked to a UFO, as various eyewitnesses have said that UFOs have this ability. Others have said though that it could be everyday wildlife, but some have said that doesn't explain the beam of light that can be seen. For the past few years, Tom DeLong has been working hard in order to prove some of the strange goings on in our world, and one of his recent comments caught people's attention. He detailed some of the things that he knows about the mysterious Black Alaskan Pyramid. For those that aren't aware, allegedly scientists, geologists and army officials have all discovered what appears to be a huge pyramid underneath Alaska, said to be twice the size of the pyramid found at Giza. Around 1992, scientists working in the area said they detected a mysterious anomaly buried underground, which in turn led them to use seismic recording equipment in order to get a better understanding of what they were dealing with. It turns out that the equipment confirmed a large structure in the shape of a pyramid was directly below them. Tom said the following about the mysterious pyramid. There's a pyramid and it's underground and they've been studying it for decades. It's bigger than Giza. I need to check where it's at. I know a very important person from the Pentagon who met with one of the lead defense contractors who was studying it, and they said they now know what it's doing. It's not turned on and it's suppressing consciousness. There was an earthquake of sorts, and all of the seismographs picked up the waves all the way through everything, and they saw this anomaly and as those shockwaves went through the land, there was some kind of structure or something that disturbed the waves. So they dug some tunnels and elevator shafts, and they've been underground studying it ever since. The news did a piece on it, and then all of a sudden all of the information vanished, and they were told to never air this again. The only thing I want to say is that there's a pyramid, and we've been studying it. End quote. One of the geologists who was involved in the recordings was that of Douglas A. Mushler, and he said that a detonation was set off in the area, and this was initially done in order to map the Earth's crust. However, the recording he got back confirmed that a huge pyramid was sitting firm inside the Earth. As mentioned by Tom, news crews then came in and did a story on the discovery, but when Douglas tried to get into contact with them to see how the story was doing, he was told that the story had never run, saying that they didn't have a copy of the broadcast, and was told not to ask any more questions. After searching around, and asking family and friends whether they had recorded the story, he quickly discovered that the story had seemingly vanished, although he notes that people did report seeing it, and confirmed that they had seen it by reciting some of the details of the findings. 
It turns out that the mysterious discovery was only covered by Ingridge's Channel 13. Douglas then emailed Linda Moulton Howe, an American investigative journalist who has a passion for the unknown. The email reads as follows. My name is Douglas A. Muchless, CW2, USA Retired, and during my service tour in Alaska, I was informed of a pyramid under the land in Alaska. There is other information concerning this that came to my attention, and this was after it was reported to us in 1992. I've tried to pass this on to others, but have not heard any response to my information. I assure you I'm telling you the truth about this, and I think that this is being kept quiet by our government, as the news was buried the very next day after it was brought to my attention. If you can help me get this info out, please call me so I can talk to you about this. My phone number is redacted. The whole story is pretty interesting, and this can be verified with your contacts. I'm assured of that, as I do not have them and came up with zero from the news people there. I'll tell you the whole story if you're interested. I've only contacted a couple of people, but have not heard back from any of them. I'm wondering if my emails are getting through to them, or is this an old story that has no interest to news reporters? Thank you for your time in this matter, Douglas A. Muchler. Due to information being limited on this, and only a few alleged military officials coming forward, some have speculated that it's an advanced pyramid that was created by a highly intelligent civilization. For years now there's been speculation about pyramids and whether they hold some type of power. Some researchers have concluded that pyramids are actually giant generators and that they can interact with and have a direct effect on the electromagnetic field. In fact, one physicist from Ukraine decided to conduct some tests and said that with the help of the Russian government, he was able to build a giant 140 foot pyramid outside of Moscow and said that the results they got from this pyramid were incredible. The test showed the following that changed around and inside the pyramid. The regeneration of tissue would happen at a much faster rate. The immune system of humans and other organisms improved. Seismic activity in the region of the pyramid decreased. This was the same for weather. Harsh weather was nowhere near as bad after the pyramid had been constructed. 5,000 prisoners were fed food that was stored inside the pyramid. The studies showed the violence rate had greatly reduced, and their behaviour had improved. Radioactive materials showed a decrease in radiation levels when inside the pyramid. As of right now, the massive pyramid that's said to be located underneath Alaska has received little media attention, with those that have spoken out about it saying that it's now in the hands of the government and that they're conducting their own tests. For over 23 years, wildlife experts have been observing the behaviour of the wire apes, the name given to an incredible troop of chimpanzees that live within Uganda. By studying this group for the last few decades, experts have established that the wire apes is the largest group of chimpanzees ever discovered, noting that this vast empire is ruled by only four warriors. The war apes who are known as the largest troop of chimpanzees ever discovered, control a vast empire and reign with terror through war, politics and alliances. Built upon over 20 years of remarkable storylines, their stories start as them being young adults, and turning into the dominant warriors that they are today. Researchers first started observing these apes back in 1993 and were eager to learn more about how they worked as a troop and how politics played heavily into their day-to-day -day lives. The documentary that was presented on the Discovery Channel broke records and gave us a glimpse into the lives of these warriors. The researchers though have said this isn't a group of chimpanzees that all get along and have morals, instead describing them as brutal in their approach and even turning their back on their own kind. One of the wildlife experts said that the chimpanzees of this region are known to slaughter their way to the top. 
the group has slowly expanded over the last few decades, with there now being over 200 members. These war apes rule the Ugandan rainforest, and have been described by those who have observed them as being the most brutal troop in the world. This clan has no fear about taking on neighbouring tribes, and will actively look for blood in order to expand their territory. In the last few years, those that have spent a considerable amount of time around these gyms have said that their behaviour is very complex, and that they can go from friendly to angry within seconds, and this has been documented various times with the warrior aims, with one of the researchers saying that they observed four chimps taking down a monkey that had strayed too close to them. Four warrior males then chased down the monkey and took his life, dividing the remains among themselves. In one part, a small group of warrior apes was seen dragging one of their own to the ground. After several minutes, the smaller male was able to run away and climb up a nearby tree. One male chimp who was given the name of Pinsa was of particular interest to the researchers, with them saying that he was never a high-ranking male, but said that he was playing a game the entire time, and was waiting for the right moment in order to execute his plan. Grappelli was described as a young chimp who was friends with Pinza, and this was because these two chimps would stick close to one another. Grappelli was above Pinza though in the hierarchy of the clan. In 2002, on the 29th of October, something happened that none of the researchers expected, with them going on to say that they had never heard of this happening before. The team were following the males through the rainforest when suddenly they heard screams coming from above them. After some initial confusion, it quickly became obvious what was happening. Pinsir had led Grappelli out into the rainforest and into an ambush. Pinsir had rounded a group of chimps together in order to attack Grappelli. There was over six different wire apes going for Grappelli, and after a short while they then decided to let him go. However, one of the war apes then bit him in the shoulder, which led to the others going into a frenzy, and led to the rest of the group then jumping back on and attacking Grappelli once again. The researchers were visibly upset with the confrontation. This was a group of apes that they'd followed around for years, but they couldn't understand why Pince would turn on his best friend. The only question that came from this was why did this happen? It was even more bizarre because Pinsa wasn't an outgoing ape, and never came across as an ape that wanted to climb the ladder in terms of dominance, but clearly he had his motives from the beginning. Pinsa saw this as his chance to rise up in the dominance hierarchy, so he planned to have his best friend taken care of. What's interesting about this group of chimps is that they displayed behaviour that's never been seen before with wildlife experts saying that although they knew that chimps acted a certain way in the wild, for example having bursts of aggression and attacking neighbouring clans, never have researchers seen apes setting traps for their own kind, and going through the lengths they went through in order to raise up through the ranks. One of the researchers said the following, The fact that these apes can also be very peaceful, very tranquil, very cooperative, I think it just shows how complex these animals are, and really how similar they are to humans. End quote. Experts have said this community is the largest in the world, and due to how powerful some of the high-ranking members are, it's likely that they'll be holding their power over the region for the foreseeable future. This film has allowed researchers to better understand how this society works, giving them the title as the toughest tribe of apes in the world. The film won Best Wildlife Film Award at the New York Wild Film Festival, and Best Animal Behaviour Film at the Jackson Hole Wildlife Film Festival. The ocean is one of the last unexplored frontiers. Every year we discover thousands of new species, showcasing how little we know about our oceans, Interestingly, in recent years, people have come forward and detailed some strange things they've encountered while exploring the oceans, and one of these came from a former National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration employee. They posted their story on Reddit, 
but when you try to view it, it's now been taken down. And this was because the individual gave out personal and specific information that went against the guidelines. I tried to reach out to the individual that posted the story, asking if they could put me in touch with the person who told them this story, but they didn't reply, even after reaching out multiple times. As of right now, there's those that believe the story and those that think it's just made up. Here's the unedited story. I am posting this for an acquaintance that does not meet the Reddit requirements for posting in this sub herself. This is not my information, nor am I in any way related to this situation or any actions taken by her. Everything beyond this point is verbatim her story as provided to me. The Navy has worked in conjunction with the government to keep this quiet on all fronts. Other governments have similar systems in place to keep this information strictly in the realm of fiction, according to public perception. I am compelled to break my silence and disseminate this information. My colleagues in the organisation I've called home for the past 12 years is responsible for keeping one of the greatest genealogical discoveries of all time quiet. The sector I work in is being restructured and downsized, so I'm going to lose my job in May. This post should expedite that process. I began my career with the Redacted office located in Redacted. I hold an MS in Biological Sciences from Redacted, and a PhD in Wildlife and Fisheries Sciences from Redacted. In 2012, there was an incident of a few beach whales that were investigated by NOAA, and a team from the Navy. This was very thoroughly hushed up immediately afterwards. The whales were full of perfectly circular incisions, where large chunks of their flesh had been removed, like cylinders of meat essentially. At first we thought this was done after the beaching, but we learned that they washed up this way. What really caught everyone's attention was the seared flesh around the circumference of the incisions, as if they were burned out with lasers. We were all baffled as we had never seen anything like this on marine life. Then we got a call informing us that a small team would be conducting a hydrographic survey of the area, using the echo sounder of a local vessel. We typically use a technique called multi-beam sonar to scan and map the seafloor in astounding detail. The datum we collect is processed by various parties, and is usually uploaded to online databases. We were told that this would not be the case for this expedition. Long story short, we found irrefutable evidence of an advanced humanoid species living under our oceans. Using the multi-beam sonar, we found their dwelling areas and also what appears to be underwater vehicles of some kind. The creatures themselves were tracked by the Navy over the course of two weeks, using a submersible equipped with special deep-sea observation equipment. The creatures displayed speeds of 70 plus knots, Faster than the sailfish, which is widely considered to be the fastest creature in the ocean. They were also recorded emitting sounds that resembled marine communications, and instruments also captured the emissions of precision sonar blasts that damaged the hull of the submersible. This is according to the Navy report. There is footage of the creatures, including juveniles. The Navy did not share the video with us but an officer I spoke with gave the following description. They don't look real. They look like computer animation or something. They have a glow around their entire body and they move really fast. Like even small movements like turning their head or moving an arm was like watching a high frame rate video. They look nothing like any fictional depiction out there. They do not have a fish tail. They are completely humanoid but extremely thin and tall. Their bodies were covered in a material resembling elemental mercury that looked like it was moving. They were very interested in the submersible and seemed to know that they were being observed as a few times they would swim off and then come back with more creatures. We observed at max five of them at once, varying sizes but otherwise identical in appearance. Their eyes were completely white and there was no visible hair, nor any features that implied male or female, no visible ears and their mouths were wide and lipless. 
with flash sequences of lights at them, sounds and even extended a robotic arm on the submersible to try and get some kind of physical sample or DNA from the specimens or the water nearest to them. We don't know how they were swimming, as they weren't wading or moving their bodies the way a fish or even a human would underwater. They were capable of just moving rapidly in any direction, without the need to change positions or swim. In fact, during the majority of the observations, they were just floating motionless without losing or gaining buoyancy. Now, there were also crafts observed via sonar, some very large. They would move faster than anything seen capable of moving underwater. They were not seen or recorded on video just on sonar. They would at times disappear completely while being observed, as if they left the water or cloaked themselves. We have two weeks worth of data on just this one area. We were made aware that this is just one spot around the world where these creatures reside hidden from view. A briefing that I was able to read during a meeting indicated that the Mariana Trench is where the largest concentration of these creatures reside, and that they seem to be completely unaffected by the dams. Structures believed to be their dwellings units have been mapped. They are perfectly hexagonal, and joined together like a honeycomb. Their composition is unknown. The Navy confiscated most of the hard evidence. All we have are some sonar readings, that are only anomalous if you know what you're looking for. I want everyone to know this information. We are not alone, but they aren't from space. In order to exist at these depths and under astronomical pressures, these beings are either invincible, or they've evolved so far beyond us that they have some kind of technology that negates both of these dangers. This is actively being covered up by every lettered organisation, and by our military. Other nations are aware of these beings, and I believe some authentic videos may even be mingled in in all of the Doctor's stuff. The sightings in Kiryat Yam were authentic. We mapped a collection of their dwellings off the coast near Cyprus Island. End quote. Every year, scientists discover thousands of new species, showing us that we still have a lot to learn about the natural world. It's incredible to think that in this day and age we're still finding undiscovered species not known to science. The jungles and oceans are some of the least explored places on the planet, and not only have they helped us to better understand some of the life forms that call this place home, but they've opened our minds to these ecosystems which were previously not understood. One location that's of particular interest is that of the icy continent. For years, scientists and researchers labelled this location as a barren wasteland, being home to only a few species. However, recent drilling operations have shown us that this isn't the case, and that Antarctica has been hiding entire ecosystems beneath its icy surface. One interesting investigation and mission was made by the Ice Cube Collaboration, the Ice Cube Collaboration said the following on their website about the mission. Ice Cube, the South Pole Neutrino Observatory, is a cubic kilometre particle detector made of Antarctic ice, and located near the Amundsen Scott South Pole Station. It's buried beneath the surface, extending to a depth of around 2,500 metres. Its surface array, ice top and denser inner subdetector Deep core significantly enhances the capabilities of the observatory, making it a multi-purpose facility. The UNICE component of IceCube consists of 5,160 digital optical modules, or DOMs, each with a 10-inch photomultiplier tube, and associated electronics. The DOMs are attached to vertical strings, frozen into 86 boreholes, and arrayed over a cubic kilometre from 1,450 metres to 2,450 metres in depth. The strings are deployed on a hexagonal grid, with 125 metre spacing, and hold 60 DOMs each. The vertical separation of the DOMs is 17 metres. End quote. 
It was during this mission, though, that the team captured something mysterious. The cameras detected what appeared to be a mysterious creature, with those who've seen it describing it as a shape-shifting squid, or possibly an octopus. The Ice Cube Observatory said the following. This camera system was deployed January 24th to 25th, 1998, at the bottom of String 13 in Amanda. The camera consisted of one down-looking camera, and one looking into the wall of the hull. Five meters below the camera system, a glass sphere with a light source pointing into the wall was located. Depths given in the movie are interpolated, and may have uncertainties up to 100 meters below 1,300 meters. The final position depth is exact. End quote. Most who've seen the photographs, though, have focused on the mysterious creature that was detected by the cameras, saying that the creature kept changing its shape as the camera approached it, causing some to say that it may have been mimicking the device, something that has been observed by researchers in the natural world. Although some said that it reminded them of a squid, others said that it doesn't match the description of a typical squid species, leading some to say that it may be an entirely new species not known to science. Others who saw the photograph said that there's nothing in the natural world that matches the descriptions of this creature, and that it's likely something entirely new. This wouldn't be surprising as Antarctica is full of ancient lakes beneath these icy sheets, all of which could hold complex life forms. Interestingly, various countries have carried out experiments in Antarctica, many of which have remained somewhat of a mystery. One of the most well-known stories that details an alleged encounter with a mysterious creature is that of Organism 46b, and those who saw these photographs suggested that this could have been one of those creatures, saying that it matches the description of what some of the scientists said. A supposed leaked document surrounding the first attempts made by Russian researchers back on the 5th of February in 2012, while drilling to the lake's surface, made reference to the creature known as Organism 46b. The report itself was titled Organism 46b, and detailed an increasingly bizarre story, in which Russian researchers claimed to have encountered a massive colossal squid residing in the lake that could release toxins into the water, could squeeze itself down into small sizes, take on weird shapes, change its physical colours, and could cause a mild form of hypnotism if a person began to stare at the creature for too long. Here are some quotes from the supposed letter written by a man named Dr. Anton Padalka. We encountered Organism 46b on our first day. It disabled our radio, which we later learned to our alarm was intentional. It's also able to paralyze prey from a distance of up to 150 feet by releasing its venom into the water. Tragically, my colleague and lifelong friend was taken out this way. He tread water wearing a blissful smile as the organism approached him. We watched helplessly as it used its thumbs to tear off his head, then popped his remains in his mouth. It was as if it had hypnotized him telepathically. It shaped itself into the form of a human diver. We thought it was one of our colleagues swimming towards us in scuba gear. By the time the closest scientist had realized what it was, it had grabbed him and torn him to bits. End quote. We know that scientists were drilling in this area because Russian scientist Valery Larkin and Sergei Balats published a paper titled Vostok Subglacial Lake. Shortly after the end of the expedition, half of Valery Lutkin's research team would end their careers in the Antarctic expeditions and leave the research team without further information surrounding the members. The encounter with Organism 46b led to the reported deaths of several top Russian researchers, and so many believe that this is why the document could have been leaked, as a warning to other researchers in the area. Despite the far-fetched abilities of Organism 46b, reports appear to match a number of known cases of squid and octopus entities in the real world. In fact, every single ability mentioned by the letters that Organism 46b might possess 
appears to match many of the abilities found in deep sea species of cephalopods, and environments that would be similar in light pressure and water quality to organism 46 beans. Given its danger and efforts needed to be contained by the Russian Federation as claimed by these documents, this could very well mean that organism 46b is one of the most dangerous creatures naturally living on planet Earth. Its ability to be weaponized for future efforts also seems to be a very real possibility, given the claims of the leaked documents and other rumors that have surfaced surrounding the creature. Since this discovery, the Ice Cube Neutrino Observatory has been decommissioned, and there's only a very limited amount of information that can be found out about these photographs. The Soviet Union built four nuclear reactors in 1977. The fourth is primarily the one held in question, and essentially responsible for engraving a deep irreversible mark in history and ultimately led to the downfall of said Soviet Union, and not to mention dramatically impacted lives including humans, wildlife and nature. Although at one point in time, a nuclear power plant in Ukraine's city of Chernobyl presented no obvious outward harm, anything nuclear related always harnesses potential risk. Unfortunately that risk would turn into a full-blown reality on April 26, 1986. They say time is healing, and although in some instances that rings true, with the incident of Chernobyl, even with time unfortunately the city and neighbouring regions still suffer the impacts that took place that day. Upon investigation, the disastrous accident occurred as a result of a test gone wrong. Workers were testing the cooling and electrical mechanisms of the fourth nuclear reactor, or Chernobyl 4 reactor as it was formerly called. The objective was to see if in the event of a power shutdown if the reactor could still be successfully cooled. Plans went entirely awry, as there was an unexpected and unanticipated power surge. Workers desperately tried to stifle the power surge in efforts to deactivate and shut it down, but it was too late. Another power surge within the reactor already had its gears in motion, causing explosions within the reactor's makeup all the way to its nuclear centre, which served to be the most detrimental of all. Once the nuclear core was exposed, radioactive material freely escaped, wrecking havoc into the atmosphere. It was chaos. As far as when things will get back to normal in Chernobyl, that is still a question that is relatively still up in the air. It's estimated that the area and neighbouring regions were still being clean up efforts for many decades. Scientists have even gone to the extent of predicting that the region and neighbouring regions deemed as exclusion zones will not be safe to inhabit for a bold and hefty 20,000 years. However, with that said, it's not to say that people are not currently inhabiting those regions. Some have returned to their old family homes to resume the farm life they once lived as children before the catastrophe at Chernobyl. That primarily applies to the elderly. However, families who are fleeing crises of conflicting situations have also been attracted to the area, and this is due to their highly affordable land. In recent years, mysterious discoveries have been made in and around the exclusion zone, and one of these is the reports of mysterious flying crafts. People who worked in Chernobyl would report seeing mysterious flying crafts above the nuclear plant, noting that they looked nothing like traditional planes or helicopters, and would hover above them motionless as if they were inspecting the area. They would do this for several minutes before making a quick exit. Interestingly, this was even documented by a few employees, but it's reported that officials brushed the sightings aside with others saying that this often happens when mysterious crafts are sighted above nuclear plants. Interestingly, Mikhail Varusky, who was working for the Radiation Control Department, said that on the same day as the disaster, he and several other colleagues would witness a mysterious craft hovering above reactor number 4, almost as if inspecting it. His story isn't very well known, but he details his encounter with UFOs, he said the following, We saw a ball of fire, and it was slowly flying in the sky. 
I think the ball was six or eight meters in diameter. Then we saw two rays of crimson light stretching towards the fourth unit. The object was some 300 meters from the reactor. The event lasted for around three minutes. The lights of the object went out and flew away in the northwestern direction. End quote. Incredibly, he goes on to detail that the radiation levels in the area dropped, going on to say the following. The UFO brought the radiation levels down. The level decreased almost four times. This probably prevented a nuclear blast. End quote. This has caused some UFO researchers to suggest that the craft was actually trying to help us. Various military personnel have come forward and said that when tests are being carried out, it's not uncommon to see UFOs in the region, going on to say that it's almost like they're watching what we're doing. These crafts have also been seen close to things like missiles, and back in 1964, former US Air Force Robert Jacobs was in charge of photo instruments. His mission was to film an Atlas rocket during his flight. When he heard liftoff, he started the cameras. He said he could see all three stages of the rocket. Thinking that everything was fine, he then took the cans of film to get them developed. He was then ordered to go to the office of one of the majors. There he was told to sit down and listen carefully to what they was about to say. He turned on the film projector and showed him the launch. As the Atlas missile entered the frame, he was told that it was traveling between 11 and 14,000 miles per hour. However, the cameras then picked up a saucer-shaped craft that came into frame. Robert Jacobs said the following about the incident. It flew into the frame and shot a beam of light at the warhead. Remember, all this stuff is flying at several thousand miles an hour. This thing fires a beam of light at the warhead. Hits it, fires another beam of light, and then flies out the way it came in. The warhead then tumbles out of space. When the lights came on, major management said, were well, you guys messing around up there? And I said no. He asked what that was, and I said, I think we have a UFO. End quote. Another report from within the exclusion zones is that of apparitions. Those who have spent a long period of time within Chernobyl... I've often reported seeing mysterious figures in the corner of their eyes, only to notice that they vanish when they try to focus on them. In fact, explorers have often said that when one of these apparitions is close by, the level of radiation spikes on the Geiger counter. Others have said that around the building, shadow people can often be sighted, with some theories suggesting that these may be the people that lost their homes and that returned to the exclusion zone after their passing. Shadow people have long been reported by individuals across the planet, and interestingly many of their stories match up, with eyewitnesses describing humanoid black masses that have the ability to go through walls and interact with things around them. There's many who have said that this is an old phenomenon, and it's only been in recent years that people have started to open up about their encounters. It's not known what they are, Scientists have said that a likely answer is that of pareidolia, while believers have said these entities are definitely real, and that they're often seen around areas where there's been some type of tragedy. Another idea that's starting to gain traction is that these shadow people may actually be individuals who are having an out-of-body experience. Regardless of what you call them or what you think they are, sightings of them are still being reported in the modern day with us no closer to understanding what or where these entities are coming from. There's many areas around Chernobyl that are out of bounds, but tours can be arranged if you want to see some of the nearby areas. Many have done this in order to explore what's been left, and one of the things you'll likely run into during your visit is that of children's dolls and children's toys, with them now being completely covered in the radioactive dust and soot. This has left the town with the appearance of being completely frozen in time, same as on the day of the evacuation, and a perfect recreation of the 1980s during the rule of the Soviet Union, with Soviet propaganda and toys of that era littered throughout the area. 
Something else that can be found within the exclusion zone is that of the giant claw. It was one of the machines that was used to help clean up the area shortly after the event. However, due to its high levels of radiation that's been left to rot, the claw is still very radioactive, and researchers have said that it can't be touched by those who visit the region. In fact, private guards have said that it's not a good idea to even get close to it, as it could cause harm to the human body. The average background radiation is around 0.16, and the claw measures in at over 39. To put that into perspective, 10 or higher could cause death within hours, which is why tour guides have told people to not go near it. A physicist at the University of Portsmouth said that by 2065, Chernobyl would have caused around 16,000 cases of thyroid cancer, and 25,000 cases of other cancers. However, other researchers have said that the amount is much higher than this. While many of us picture Egypt to be filled with dusty, sandy roads, offset with the old pyramid, the modern Egyptian lifestyle is far from this. Despite our primary school history lessons being filled with the process of mummification and the role of pharaohs, which are important aspects of Egyptian history, there is so much more than that hidden in the past of Egypt. For years, the Egyptian pyramids have been a mystery. The giant structures have stood up to the test of time, and have even caused division with the archaeological community. One thing that researchers found strange is that the Egyptians littered their walls with details about how they lived, what pharaohs ruled which times, battles and various other things. One thing that's hardly mentioned though is that the creation of the pyramids. However, a recent discovery may shine a light on how the incredible structures were created. While it's no secret that many mysterious and almost otherworldly events occurred in ancient Egypt, most can't seem to be able to wrap their heads around how the ancient Egyptians were able to construct their pyramids. The Tuli Papyrus has been of particular interest. Found in an antique shop in Cairo and then purchased by Alberto Tuli in 1933, the claims contained in the scroll made waves throughout the world. Although the copy was then recopied several times over before translation, the papyrus nevertheless took off among believers as an ancient record of flying crafts and some of the best evidence of alien life. The beginning lines reads as follows. In the year 22, of the third month of winter, sixth hour of the day, it was found that a strange fiery disc was coming from the sky. It had no head. The breath of its mouth emitted a foul odour. Its body was one rod in length and one rod in width. It had no voice. The translation then continues. After several days had passed, they became more numerous in the sky than ever. They shined in the sky more than the brightness of the sun and extended to the limits of the four supports of heaven. It was after the evening meal when the disks ascended even higher into the sky to the south. Fish rained down from the sky, a marvel never seen before since the foundation of the country, and it was ordered that the event will be recorded for His Majesty, in the annals of the House of Love to be remembered forever. End quote. Analysis of the complete text of these translations made scholar Prince Bryce to racial winds, suspects that the original papyrus was part of the annals of Thutmose the Second, although there's nothing that mentions Pharaoh Thutmose by name. However, if Prince Boris is to be believed, the papyrus text would then date back to around 1400 BC. At this point in ancient Egypt, the highly advanced civilization was incredibly adapted to understanding the workings of astronomy, and was familiar and knowledgeable about celestial happenings to such an extent that we can reasonably assume that if the papyrus is indeed legitimate, what they were seeing was not just an astronomical display that they did not understand, and so attributed to be unexplainable fiery disks. Many point out that during that time they didn't have things like planes or helicopters, so they could only describe the event by using things that they were aware of. This is why a lot of alleged mysterious flying crafts are described as fiery birds, because they knew what birds were, 
and at the time they were the only things that were flying around in the sky. This could be one of the earliest recordings of a mysterious flying object. Some have pointed out that these events can be interpreted as various things, but researchers point out that this isn't the first time that mysterious objects have been documented. One of the earliest accounts of mysterious flying crafts was observed during the 1561 celestial event. In paranormal circles, this is one of the most baffling and intriguing cases of mysterious flying crafts, and it was actually recorded. Strange sightings in our skies have often been reported throughout history, but the celestial event that occurred in Nuremberg is by far unique. On April 14th, 1561, citizens of Nuremberg in Bavaria were awoken to a strange scene that played out in the sky above them. Residents claim they saw hundreds of small objects, similar to fireballs that were exploding in the sky, as well as crafts shaped like spheres, triangles and crosses. These crafts seemed to fly erratically, as if they were battling each other. This event lasted for over an hour, at the end of which a large triangular-shaped craft was seen to come into sight, followed by a large crash that could be heard outside the city. This celestial battle was recorded on a broadsheet by Hans Wolf Glasser. The translation of the wood carving can be read as the following. In the morning of April 14, 1561, at daybreak between 4 and 5 a.m., a dreadful apparition occurred in the sun, and then this was seen in Nuremberg in the city, by many men and women. At first there appeared in the middle of the sun two blood-red semicircle arcs, just like the moon in its last quarter, and in the sun above and below and on both sides, the colour was blood and there stood a round ball of partly dull, partly black ferrous colour. In between there were visible a few blood-red crosses, between which there were red stripes, becoming thicker to the rear and to the front malleable like the rods of reed grass, which were intermingled. These all started to fight among themselves, so that the glows which were first in the sun flew out to the one standing on both sides. Therefore the globe standing outside the sun in the small and large rods flew into the sun. The globes flew back and forth among themselves, and fought with each other for over an hour. When the conflict was in the sun's path, the sun got more intense. They all became fatigued to such an extent, that they all, as said above, fell from the sun down upon the earth, as if they all burned and then wasted away on the earth with immense smoke. After all this, there was something like a black sphere, very long and thick-sighted. The shaft pointed to the east and the point pointed west. Although we have seen shortly one after another, many kinds of signs, we are still unfortunately no closer to finding out what this event was. The sighting would have been looked upon with a deeply religious significance, but to modern age researchers and enthusiasts, it may have been of worldly visitors of a different kind. The Dogman is an elusive cryptid that's been seen all across America. Cryptids are creatures that are not backed up by science, noting that there's not enough evidence to suggest that they exist. However, a large number of people have come forward in recent years and have detailed their encounters, and one of the most interesting ones is that of the mysterious Dogman, a large human dog-like creature described as looking like a werewolf and possessing superhuman strength and abilities. One of the issues with the majority of these encounters is that they happen so fast and the eyewitnesses is usually left dazzled and confused. This comes down to the fact that they weren't expecting to see such a creature, so don't have things like cameras ready when the encounter happens. When the eyewitnesses reach for their camera, the creature is usually vanished. However, I was sent a video and photos from a woman who claimed to have captured proof of the dogman. As mentioned, the Dogman Cryptid is probably one of the hardest to capture on camera, and even harder to do so in the daytime. Yet this individual claims that what they saw looked eerily similar to the descriptions of the mysterious Dogman. She said the following about the encounter. Yes, please use the images. I want everyone to look at it and tell me what they think because I have no idea what it is. 
It looks like it has a cane on head to me and is as big as a bear so I'm kinda thinking it's a dog man. Also there have been several sightings back in the same area of an upright walking canine. Absolutely go ahead and share my story. I've had other encounters in the area as well, and like I said other people in the area have reported seeing a large upright creature. There's definitely something back there and it's staying around the same area because three other people have seen the same thing. End quote. Here's the video. Yeah, what is that? What is that? I think it just turned and looked at us. I seen its ear flick. <laughs> oh, it oh, looked, oh my oh, god! Oh, it just oh, legs and perked its ears up. What? Wait, where is it? Oh, I see it. Do it again, it? Kenna. Do it again. Into oh! that, do it. Make a noise. No. Why? Interestingly, it does appear to resemble the Dogman Cryptid, having a cane on head and slender but muscular body. This could be some of the most impressive footage we have of this cryptid, and could prove once and for all that eyewitnesses are actually seeing a creature that looks similar to a werewolf. Not many people have seen this footage, but those who have are convinced that it shows a Dogman, and say it's some of the best evidence we have so far. Even going on to note that you can see the creature moving its head and ears. One person said the following about the footage. I'm glad I saw this on the Dogman group as I think it's some of the best evidence we have of the cryptid. The Dogman has always interested me in being my favourite cryptid. Hearing people detail their stories always makes me more interested in the creature and wanting to research it more. But some of these stories sound too far-fetched and unbelievable. But when I saw this footage, it matches up exactly with what people are seeing. It's incredible that we have such detailed footage of the Dogman, and it's even more impressive that this was taken during the daytime. End quote. The majority of Dogman encounters happened during the night, and even though some witnesses have tried to photograph what they saw, the photographs usually come out blank or really hard to make out. It's very unusual to have photographs and videos of a cryptid during the daytime. Skeptics say that when people see these cryptids during the nighttime, they're actually just encountering everyday wildlife. But this footage pretty much matches up with the majority of eyewitness accounts. Those who have come forward with their encounters have often compared the creature to a more dog-like Sasquatch, whereas others believe it to be more of a werewolf beast and at the centre of Skinwalker legends. Interestingly, for the last 60 years there have been many reports about these creatures, and as with most of these tales, the majority of these stories follow a similar theme. Researchers have managed to pinpoint the first Dogman sighting to 1887. This was said to have occurred in Wexford County. The story goes that two lumberjacks were having a conversation when one of them spotted something mysterious. He described it as having a man's body and a dog's head. When they noticed it, they quickly left the scene, not wanting to stay around and risk getting hurt by the lodge creature. It's interesting to note that the Navajo Native Americans have also been talking about these creatures for years. Though they're known as the Dogman, others have also said they go by the name of Skinwalkers. They follow a similar description, looking like a human but having werewolf-like features. The Navajo described them as possessing superhuman strength, being able to move very fast and having the ability to easily take down a human. Although many people have come forward with their reports, one thing that the majority of these cases lack is evidence. It's frustrating for eyewitnesses as they encounter something incredible but then have no evidence to prove what they saw. Those who encounter something mysterious say it's very frustrating when this happens, as all you have to back up your claims is your words. As of today, there's been various people who have come forward with their encounters with the mysterious beast. There's those that believe the dog man is real and tries to avoid being seen by humans, and then there's those that think the creature is just being misidentified with everyday wildlife. However, with this new footage, it may just win over a few people. Those that have seen it have said it's some of the best footage we have of the beast, 
and could help us understand certain things about its anatomy. Uncovering the secrets of the past continues to be a fascination for many. The pyramids are some of the most impressive structures we have on our planet. They've survived the test of time, and have caused a lot of theories to be put forward in recent years to how they were built. Going back several years ago, someone uploaded a video of them travelling to Egypt. In the video, we can see they sent a remote control car within the Great Pyramid, and they said they found something that the government would want to keep a secret. This interested many and it was soon revealed that a website was set up called NowIKnow.com, which had on it a countdown until the big reveal was going to happen. The short video shows a car being sent down a small tunnel in one of the pyramids, and as it gets deep inside many strange symbols and markings can be seen. But the most interesting discovery is said to be a secret chamber that shows a tall figure inside. When the video was uploaded, many different theories were put forward to try and explain it, with some saying that the footage is real and shows some of the secret tunnels within the pyramid, while others said the video was a hoax and was likely a viral stunt. Regardless, one thing this video did do is get people talking. The uploader cut the video and said that more interesting discoveries will be revealed if they don't meet their demands, one of which was that they wanted to be paid $5 million for the video. The following statement was put on the website. You have 30 days to pay me $5 million, or I will upload the rest of the video. End quote. The rest of the video didn't get uploaded and whoever was behind the stunt suddenly went quiet, again sparking more out their theories for what happened to the individual, and why the long version of the video was never uploaded. Some even suggested that due to the sensitive nature of the finding, he may have been silenced by the Egyptian authorities, while others said it was a scam and because they didn't get their money they just left it. One person said the following, Unlike most, I don't think it's some viral marketing. I think that this could actually be the real deal. However, what I suspect is that they made the RC car with a plan. They basically knew exactly what they was going to do from the beginning and was so confident they was going to find something interesting that they filmed it all, from building the RC car until his arrival at the pyramids. This indicates that he was there before and found the shaft at least. However, how could he have known he would find something interesting beforehand? Maybe his RC car would have run into a brick wall, that would make all the filming the RC car building etc a waste. End quote. While another person said this, Even if the video is fake, I think the pyramids are hiding some secrets. I still think there's many undiscovered rooms and tunnels underneath the pyramids themselves, and I've heard Egyptologists talk about there being a huge complex underneath the structure. Regardless of whether the video is real or not, the bigger question here is what are the pyramids hiding? End quote. Or this person said this, if you watch the video, it does look legit. I've read some theories that the individual worked in the area and were tipped off about there being undiscovered shafts in the pyramids. It's obvious that some officials are ignoring evidence and fail to further investigate these claims. I've even read that he may have been a tour guide in the area and wanted to show the world what really lied within the pyramids. End quote. In recent years, many interesting discoveries have been made in and around the pyramids. One most notable ancient society seen as the cradle of human civilization were the advancements made by the ancient civilization of Egypt, and over the years some mysterious discoveries have been made inside one of their greatest creations. Recently, scientists made the discovery that electromagnetic properties exist in the Great Pyramid of Giza, this could mean that nanoparticle designs could be designed for highly efficient sensors and solar cells. The scientists and researchers have discovered that the giant pyramid concentrates electric and magnetic energy into its internal chambers. This is located below its base and it creates a pocket of higher energy. As many of you know, the pyramids have inspired many legends over the years, and some think the Egyptians were way ahead of their time. One of the biggest questions is how did this civilization build such impressive structures? 
Some of the world's greatest minds have said it's perhaps one of the greatest ancient mysteries. Dr. Andre said the following, Egyptian pyramids have always attracted great attention. We as scientists were interested in them as well. So we decided to look at the Great Pyramid's radio waves. The international research team noticed that the shape of the Great Pyramid of Giza and its ability to focus electromagnetic energy. The team then created a model of the pyramid as they wanted to measure its electromagnetic response. By doing these studies, the team was able to see how the wave energy was being scattered or absorbed by the pyramid. The scientists have said that the ancient Egyptians were not aware of this design. However, some have questioned how the ancient Egyptians would have been able to do this by mistake. The pyramid is special though. As mentioned, it's able to focus wave energy through its core. It seems that every year researchers find out more about the pyramids. The Great Pyramid is located at the centre of the landmass of the Earth. The four faces of the pyramid are slightly concave, and it's thought that this is the only pyramid to have been built this way. The centres of the four sides are indented with an extraordinary degree of precision. This means that it actually forms an eight-sided pyramid. What's bizarre though is that this can only be seen from the sky. What many have pointed out is why can we only see this when you're above the pyramid? What use would this have in a time when air travel was not possible? Some researchers have also said this wouldn't have been done by mistake, and that it hasn't caused the overall structure to suffer in any way. Although crop circles may sound like a modern day creation, one of the first reports of them came from 1678. According to the account of the farmer, he saw bright lights in his field. Not thinking anything of it, he waited until the morning to go out and inspect what had happened. At first light, he went outside to find perfectly round circles in his crops. Due to being religious, he thought that perhaps this was a sign and so he abandoned any efforts to harvest the crops. Fast forward to the modern day and we know that humans can create crop circles, and quite easily. People who create them normally use ropes, a plank and ladders, and since people have come forward to take credit for these designs, the mystery around them has dropped dramatically. However, it's not until you start researching this topic that you begin to realise that it's not quite as mundane as first thought. During the summer of 2008, a crop circle appeared in Wiltshire, England, and at first glance it looked like a circular crop circle. It wasn't until an astrophysicist looked at this and was able to crack the meaning behind it. They said that what this actually shows is pi to 10 digits. Although it was covered by a few mathematical websites, it didn't really gain much attention. Despite the incredibly complex design and meaning, there was no trace of anyone in the nearby area that could have created such a complex design. In fact, even detailed inspections of the field were carried out in order to see if anyone had been there during its construction, but nothing could be found to indicate a human's presence. Psychological studies have been conducted on the general public in regards to crop circles, and most people agreed with what they were being told even when their eyes could clearly see something else, with the group organisers saying that this is what they call group opinions, and even if you show someone something, their opinion can be changed if the majority of the group disagrees, and this is the reason why some have said that this pie crop circle hasn't been featured in the mainstream media. It's not until you start researching this topic that you realise so much has been left out, and usually the ones that are most commonly featured are the ones that are easiest to explain. One of the most interesting crop circles to appear though has to be that of the grey humanoid. Finding information on this crop circle is actually quite hard, which was surprising as it's probably one of the most famous crop circles ever made, but yet the information on it is limited. But after doing some deep research, it was made apparent that scientists and researchers had taken an interest in this design, which was interesting to read but also sad that I had to scroll to page 12 in order to find this information. Mia Pikkinen is one of the many scholars who have studied this particular circle. 
She is a physicist from the University of Helsinki in Finland. She has studied various crop circles, and even published a paper titled the following: "Crop Circles and Life at Parallel Space-Time Machines." Other scientists have said that the message contained a binary code, with academics saying they were able to reveal the hidden message. It says the following: "But where the bearers of false gifts and their broken promises." Much pain, but still time. Believe there is good out there. We oppose deception. Conduit closing. End quote. Something to note is that the field was shut off during the night, so someone would have needed to sneak in during the night, create this complex design, and not get caught, all while doing this in the middle of the night with no lights. Nothing was detected in the field that day. And when further studies were conducted, there was no signs of anyone having been in the field, with no traces being found at any of the entrances. This is an abstract of Dr. Pickering's study in regard to the crop circle. In this paper, we combine the parallel parallel in time method, together with spatial parallelization, and investigate this space-time parallel scheme by means of solving the three-dimensional incompressible Navier-Stokes equations. Parallelization of time stepping provides a new direction, and allows the use of additional cores to further speed up simulations. After spatial parallelization has saturated. End quote. Lucy Pringle, who was able to photograph and study the crop circles, said the following: The message consists of two parts, an alien picture and a picture representing a spiral-like sequence. Starting from the center of the picture and proceeding counterclockwise. Obviously, there are one or two incomprehensible words involved, one of which is E E L I, and U V E. One could consider the possibility that the message has a much deeper layer than the summer oracle-like statement in A S C I I code, or the American Standard Code for Information Interchange. And that the presence of the little inconsistencies might be intended to make clear that a deeper level is involved. What these beings would like to communicate is something very essential about themselves as a life form. The image of an alien accompanying the bit sequence suggests this. This something very essentially could obviously include the code for translating ordinary DNA triplets to amino acids. These analogs could even be electromagnetic waves. There could also be other codes. Just at the time when the message had arrived, I developed an entire hierarchy of cognitive codes, based on Mersenne and primes, and regular polygons constructible using only compass and ruler. The first guess is that the message should be represented by some universal code. The appearance of three by three bit code words decomposing naturally to three sequences of three bits. Suggest that a cognitive code consistent with genetic code might be involved. This guess was very useful in that it led to the identification of the genetic code of RNA, and the decomposition of three by three bit proportions, also suggesting that information about RNA is in question. End quote. Tom Bearden is a former lieutenant colonel in the U.S. Army, with a bachelor's of science degree in mathematics. He's worked with electromagnetic warfare, electronic countermeasures in the U.S. military. He went on to say the following about these formations, and how they could be linked with mysterious crafts. In fact, there are a great many anomalous events of the past few decades, which might very well be explained by the Russians testing their electromagnetic weapons. It would seem that the mysterious appearance of crop circles around the world. Could be accomplished by feeding a precise mathematical graphic pattern into the computerized aiming software, and changing the very molecular structure of the crops themselves, alongside the lines of that pattern. The stalks fall over from the localized effects of the waves. End quote. Interestingly, another paper published by Dr. Levingood was featured in the Journal of Geophysical Research. The team studied crop circles after they had been created during the night, and noticed some anomalies in the creations that showed they can't have been created using everyday tools. It reads as follows: 
Crop formations consist of geometrically organized regions ranging from 2 to 80 meters in diameter, in which the plant's primary grain crops are flattened in horizontal positions. Plants from crop formations display anatomical alterations, which cannot be accounted for by assuming the formations are hoaxes. Near the soil surface, the curved stems often form complex swells with vortex-type patterns. In the present paper, evidence is presented which indicates the structural and cellular alterations taking place in plants exposed within the confines of the crop circles, differences which were determined to be statistically significant when compared with control plants taken outside the formations. These transformations were manifested at the macroscopic level as abnormal nodal swelling, gross malformations during embryogenesis, and charred epidermal tissue. Significant changes in seed germination and development were found, and at the microscopic level differences were observed in cell wall pit structures. Affected plants also had characteristics suggesting the involvement of transient high temperatures. End quote. It's interesting how many scientists and researchers have got involved in this topic, but strangely their names seem to be left out when people talk about crop circles. If anything, this proves that the topic of crop circles is one that's still shrouded in mystery, as these discoveries have shown us that at least some of them are created using direct energy weapons. Residents in Italy have just reported a worrying event. They have said that thousands of birds mysteriously fell from the sky during New Year's Eve, and what's worrying is that this isn't the first time this has happened. At the moment, various different theories have been put forward for why these birds dropped to the ground, with local residents saying that birds in the air of Rome have been acting strange this year. One resident said the birds have been seen flying around in circles and not acting themselves, with others following on from this and saying that they're suddenly dropping from the sky, and that they're not sure what's caused the birds to act like this. This recent discovery states that thousands of birds started to drop from the sky in central Rome, and this was before, during and after fireworks were set off. The majority of the birds were discovered at the Tamini train station, with motorists and residents being able to capture the aftermath of the event. Although some blame the fireworks on the birds dropping to the ground, others suggested that this isn't what caused them to fall. Going back in February, residents in Rome once again reported a worrying event. Hundreds of birds suddenly dropped to the ground. This news came shortly after police in North Wales investigated a similar occurrence. Fast forward two months and this was reported by residents in Rome. Strangely enough, residents reported that the birds acted very similar to those in Wales, saying that they were flying around in circles and then suddenly dropped to the ground. What's odd though is how many of these cases were happening so close to each other. As many have pointed out, it seems that these mass bird darts are happening every other month, and as of right now, no one seems to know why. Although researchers have given a variety of reasons why mass bird darts can happen, it's unusual for them to be happening around the same time as each other. One resident in Rome said the following about the event. Me and my friend were close to the area when this happened. We could hear the birds going crazy and flying around in circles. I've lived in the area for years and I've never seen anything like this. No one seemed to be sure why they were acting this way. They were flying like this for over 45 minutes before they started to drop one by one. It was like something from a movie and was actually quite scary. It was like something was affecting them that we couldn't see. End quote. It's reported that hundreds of birds were found in Rome shortly after this event. One source reported that the reason these birds were dropping were due to strong winds. This explanation wasn't met with open arms. Scientists and researchers have investigated this phenomenon over the years, and different theories have been put forward to try and explain why these birds suddenly pass away. Various things can affect these birds. This ranges from electromagnetic currents to things like poisons. As some have said though, if these animals were poisoned, is it likely they would all drop at once? 
and in the same air as each other. In these situations, all of the birds can be found very close to each other. Some have said it's as if these birds were zapped with something, and whatever passed through them caused them to pass away on the spot. It does seem as though these cases have increased in the past year. Various reports have emerged from countries such as England, Wales, the Netherlands and now Italy, and these are only the ones we know about. Many eyewitnesses have said they've seen something similar, but that the majority of the time it doesn't get reported by the news. As of right now it's clear that something is affecting these birds, with some pointing out that these cases could be linked to each other in some way. Perhaps our planet is changing, or perhaps we are the cause behind these events. According to the United States Geological Survey Wildlife Health Center, in the United States over 175 mass bird deaths have occurred, and this has happened in the last 10 years alone. What's confused some researchers though is that it's not always known why this happens, with various other countries reporting similar occurrences. Back in the middle of September, reports were made that another mass dive was happening in the southwestern area of the United States, and that it has some scientists confused and worried as to why this is happening. Various theories have been put forward to explain why this is happening, from the insects they eat to the air they're breathing, to wildlife and even other theories that suggest the magnetic field is playing up. Researchers said that the birds were not acting themselves, for example, not flying away when cars were driving towards them, and just in general being down, something that's not really seen in this area. It wasn't long before eyewitnesses came forward and said that the wildlife wasn't acting normal, and some birds were just falling from the sky. When local researchers saw the numbers, they only then got an idea of how bad this was getting, saying that already hundreds of thousands of birds are showing this strange behaviour and that the number could go into the millions. Residents in Wales have detailed seeing birds acting strange, noting that native species seem to be on the decrease, with one person saying the following. In Angsley, this was reported a while back, and this happened a few weeks after that initial event, but it didn't really get reported about. I discovered a few of these birds in my garden at the beginning of the year, What's strange though was during the middle of the night I could hear some loud noises. They sounded like loud booms, and I did say to my partner that this will likely disturb the local wildlife. However, the next morning there were seven of these birds in my garden. I did talk to my neighbours about the booms, but they said that they didn't hear them, with my partner saying that they think it might have been the military. I'm not saying the two events are linked, but I just found it strange how these loud booms happened and then I found the birds in my garden the following morning." End quote. All throughout human history, there have been a handful of individuals seemingly possessing the ability to not only predict the future, but to potentially have caused a change to our world in ways unimaginable at the time. Some of these individuals have claimed they've travelled to the future, revealing details about how our planet looks, what happens to the human race and how the future may not look all that bright for us humans. Various people have made predictions in the past, some of which they were mocked for as they sounded too fantastical or just outright bizarre, but those who have researched these cases have said that some of these predictions actually came true. Scientists have said that there's no proof of time travellers, and anyone who tells a story of time travel is just making it up. Regardless, there's those that have claimed to have travelled to the future, and some stories are eerily similar to events that are playing out at the moment. One person shared their time travel story saying they travelled to the year 2030. They said the following, I can't give specific details about my work, but I was able to travel forward in time due to my job. My whole life I have been dedicated to my job. I have no partner or children and it allows me to focus all my attention on my career. This also means that when risky situations come up at work I will happily put myself forward. After all I have nothing to lose. 
The classified program I was a part of gave me and several other employees the opportunity to travel forward in time. I don't expect to win everyone over with my experience. I just want to tell people what I saw. The year 2030 will not be a utopia. It will be an interesting year that will cause even more divide than what's happening right now. The vast majority of people will not own anything by the time 2030 comes around. The majority of the population will begin to rely on their state, and this is exactly what they wanted as it means all those individuals will have lost any power they once had. One of the first questions you might have then is how would this ever happen? There's no way people would just sit back and accept something like this. The reason behind why this plays out so perfectly for them is because they will sell it to you as though it benefits you, when in reality the only people benefiting from this will be the people at the top. By the time this year comes around the majority of people will own nothing. How this works is that people will rent things from the state. You will have the opportunity to rid yourself of debt and things you can't pay off. What this means is that you will be a free human. Or at least, this is how they want to sell it to you. What it actually means is that you will be under control of the state. Whether you will admit it or not, they will own you and everything that you do in your life. They will sell this that there's a lot of pros for you in that this is an opportunity you should take. But be warned, once you sign over this deal, there's no turning back. You are essentially signing your life over to them and will become 100% dependent upon the government. I'm still torn about the experience. The human brain is a very complex thing and it's no secret that we have devices and ways that mess with it. I know this because I've taken things and have experimented on people. These classified projects are still happening. We have the technology to do this without having someone directly in front of us. We can use this tech from afar and watch as the side effects play out. I understand if people don't believe me. But one thing you can guarantee is that this plan is playing out right before your eyes. One of the reasons why people don't see this is because they're not selling it as I've stated it. They will sell it to you as if it benefits you. End quote. What's interesting about these statements is that this person isn't the first one to come forward with this idea. And many who have read these kinds of statements have said they don't sound too far-fetched. Others in the post have warned us about what the future looks like, and that governments will come together and essentially rule over our lives. There's those that bind to these theories and others that say they're just made up, and that the government has never done anything bad to us, and that they should be trusted. There's others though that have said the idea of time travel is possible. Though evidence of this being able to occur in our universe is yet to be proven, According to the efforts made in understanding gravitational waves and warping of space and time, Einstein came across a strange revelation when it came to understanding the nature of the distance in the universe. It was originally believed in classical physics that the shortest possible distance between two points was that of a straight line drawn between both points. However, Einstein challenged this idea by noting that the very fabric of space and time could warp and bend meaning that the shortest distance between two points is rather the two points being directly folded on top of each other. His analogy was often compared to a worm and an apple. Rather than going around the surface of the apple to get to the other side, the worm could burrow through the apple, creating a hole in the surface and appearing directly on the other side. It's of no surprise then that this theoretical tear through the fabric of space and time is referred to that of a wormhole. This means that if properly achieved, movement across the universe could be shortened to something known as an instantaneous transportation. This means that rather than travelling any distance whatsoever, theoretically one would have travelled no distance at all, seemingly appearing at their desired location any distance across the universe. Once the mechanisms for how such a movement is achieved, it would be possible that to travel between planets, we would not even have to exit the atmosphere to appear on the other side of the universe. Antarctica is one of the least explored places on planet Earth. The first sighting of Antarctica is now acknowledged to have taken place around January 1820, 
and this was by two Russian ships. Fast forward to the 1930s, and teams of scientists and researchers have tried to extensively map and explore Antarctica, and although there's no permanent residents that call this place home, many workers do live in Antarctica, helping to study the environment and carry out scientific tests. Ever since early explorers touched down in this region though, there's been whispers of strange goings on throughout the area, leading amateur researchers to conduct their own research in order to get to the bottom of some of these mysteries. Most of these comments and theories usually stem from somewhere, whether it's a strange photograph taken from a satellite, or comments that have been made by early explorers. The reason why Antarctica is so fascinating to many people is because of how little we know about the area, and due to the constant findings that are being made on top of and below the ice. Only recently scientists had announced that there's an unseen world living beneath Antarctica, which likely hold thousands of new species which are not known to modern science. These incredible creatures can give us an insight into how animals can adapt to different environments, and we may be able to apply some of this information to places within our solar system. Being able to survive in these extreme environments is a perfect example of life finds a way. Back in December 1955, explorers mapped parts of Antarctica and revealed that they'd found a dome. Certain communities picked up on this and started saying that this is proof that something strange is happening in Antarctica, and this is the proof they needed. The book that detailed this is the 1958 Encyclopedia Americana. It reads as follows. These flights prove the inland areas to be featureless in character with a dome 13,000 feet high at a latitude 80 degrees south, longitude 90 degrees east. End quote. Those who believe the strange goings on in Antarctica, and believe this planet is different to this scientific belief, have said that scientists found a large dome above Antarctica, and this is the real reason why people can't go there or fly above the region. One person who believes in these theories said the following, this is the real reason why you can't visit and explore Antarctica. What many people don't know is that the air is heavily guarded by the government, and it's near impossible to fly above these regions. To me it sounds like they're trying to keep people out, and the reason they're doing this is because something is down there that they don't want the people knowing about. We now have proof of this huge dome down in Antarctica and it wouldn't surprise me if this, along with other things, is the main reason why they're trying to stop people from going down there. End quote. Others carried on from this and said this is just one of the things that's been found in the region, going on to say that many explorers have detailed seeing other strange things when flying above the icy continent. One user said that every year satellites capture strange-looking objects that appear to be embedded in the snow saying that this could be proof of advanced civilizations that happened to live in this region thousands of years ago, or that it could show that large operations are being carried out here by governments across the world. And the reason some of these photographs are blurred is because they don't want us to know what's going on. Not everyone is entirely convinced though, and people quickly shut down these claims, saying that the people spreading the wrong message are those that don't understand the correct terminology. The truth here is that dome in terms of geology means a large structure that's formed by rock strata. These domes usually have an arch-like shape, and can reach thousands of feet in height. One good way of describing these domes is like someone cutting a tennis ball in half, although scientists have noted that not all domes are perfectly rounded. Some of the ways that these large domes develop is with the help of magma, this magma flow eventually pushes up surface rock layers, which in turn gives us this dome look. In fact, the official Antarctica website said the following about the discovery. Dome Arcus has a surface elevation of 4,093 meters, or 13,428 feet. It's the highest place in East Antarctica. It's also one of the least known places on the globe. An automatic weather station provides data from this remote site. Dome Arcus lies near one end of a ridge around 60km long and 10km wide, 
were 37.2 miles long and 6.2 miles wide. The ice there is more than 3,000 meters thick, overlaying the subglacial Gamvertsev Mountains. The world's lowest temperature ever recorded was minus 89.2 degrees, and this happened in July 1983 at the Russian station Vostok, in land of Australia's Cassie Station. Dome Arcus is nearly 600 meters high in elevation than Vostok. This means there's a good chance that the automatic weather station at Dome Arcus could record the world's lowest surface temperature. The coldest temperature to date was minus 82.5 degrees, and this happened in July 2005. The automatic weather station at Dome Arcus was set up as part of the Australian-Chinese collaboration in January 2005. No ground-based scientific investigation had been made at this site before the arrival of the Chinese Oversnow Transverse Team. The weather station measures wind speed, air temperature with sensors mounted on mast arms, at 1 meter, 2 meter and 4 meters above the snow surface. Snow temperature is 0.1 meters, 1 meter, 3 meters and 10 meters in depth. Atmospheric pressure, wind direction, incoming solar radiation, relative humidity and snowfall rate, end quote. Our universe is full of incredible sights and wonders. It's only been in the last 100 years or so that we've started to understand what's actually out there. NASA and other space agencies are always making new discoveries, helping us to better understand some of the cosmic wonders outside of our solar system. There's some though that have said that NASA can't always explain these discoveries, and one of the most recent ones was a strange object that showed up next to our sun. This alleged object has been detected by NASA for a few days now, with amateur researchers noting that it's been sticking close to our sun. Online users who've seen the photographs have described it as looking like a large planet. NASA themselves have said that they've detected similar looking things close to our sun and that there's actually an explanation for it, noting that although these things look out of the ordinary, or even things like giant ships, the truth is that they're quite a common occurrence, which is one of the reasons why discoveries like this often make the rounds every couple of weeks or so. They've said that the truth behind these images is that they're not planets or ships, but rather that of a coronal mass ejection. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration said the following, Coronal mass ejections are large expulsions of plasma and magnetic fields from the sun's corona. They can eject billions of tons of coronal material and carry an embedded magnetic field that is stronger than the background solar wind's interplanetary magnetic field strength. CMEs travel outward from the sun at speeds ranging from slower than 250 km per second to as fast as near 3000 km per second. The fastest Earth-directed CMEs can reach our planet in as little as 15 to 18 hours. Slower CMEs can take several days to arrive. NASA said the following. The outer solar atmosphere the corona is structured by strong magnetic fields. When these fields are closed often above sunspots, the confined solar atmosphere can suddenly and violently release bubbles of gas and magnetic fields called coronal mass ejections. A CME can contain a billion tons of matter that can be accelerated to several million miles per hour in a spectacular explosion. Solar material streams out through the interplanetary medium, impacting any planet or spacecraft in its path. CMEs are sometimes associated with flares, but can occur independently. End quote. Although these events have been documented countless times by NASA and other space agencies, those who believe that there's something else point out that typical CMEs don't match the descriptions of these strange objects, saying that CMEs are usually much more random in appearance and appear to be elongated, whereas these objects look to be circular in shape. The discussion of life outside our planet is always growing, especially since NASA and companies like SpaceX talk about exploring the solar system. Although there's some that believe we've already been contacted, and are in talks with advanced life forms. Scientists have said this is not the case, 
and that as of right now we have no proof that there's other advanced life forms out in space. This hasn't stopped them from talking about the topic however, noting that it's very likely that there's other life forms out in the universe, saying that out of the billions of planets scattered throughout the Milky Way galaxy, one of them is likely to hold some type of life form. Jill Tata, who used to be the director of the Centre for SETI, which stands for the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, said the following about advanced life forms. Often the aliens of science fiction say more about us than they do about themselves. While Sir Stephen Hawking warned that alien life might try to conquer or colonise Earth, I respectfully disagree. If aliens were able to visit Earth, that would mean that they would have technological capabilities sophisticated enough not to need slaves, food or other planets. If aliens were to come here it would be simply to explore. Considering the age of the universe, we probably wouldn't be their first extraterrestrial encounter either. We should look at movies like Men in Black 3, Prometheus and Battlefield as great entertainment, and metaphors for our own fears. But we should not consider them harbinger of alien visitation. End quote. Some people shared their views on this and agreed with Jill, saying that Stephen Hawking didn't have the right attitude when talking about advanced life forms. One online user said the following. Firstly, we don't know how advanced these life forms would be. For all we know, they could be above us right now, and we might not even know it. We may not have the correct technology to detect them. There's so many variables that play into discussions like this. In terms of the universe, we are extremely young. And can you imagine what a civilization would look like if it was a hundred thousand or a million years more advanced than us? Think of what we've achieved in the last 100 years alone. When we think of the universe, we often apply human logic and human capabilities, and for all we know, there could be things out there that are beyond our comprehension. The truth is and always will be that we'll never know how many advanced life forms are out there in space. We're never going to have the tech that will allow us to travel with thousands of light years in a short amount of time, at least not any time soon. So the scientists and researchers saying these things are really guessing based on the limited information that we have available. The only thing I will say is that if a day comes that aliens do make contact with us, we best hope that they're nothing like us, otherwise we would be in serious trouble. End quote. In recent weeks, Uri Geller has been saying some interesting things. He said that he had multiple meetings with Werner von Braun at NASA, and said that while there he was shown some interesting pieces of materials, that he later said came from down mysterious aircrafts. He decided to come forward with his story after hearing about the various sightings that pilots made in regards to mysterious flying objects, noting that the government had known about these things for years. He said the following, for years I had to deny my true mission and camouflage my work. Few people know the truth. I presume all world leaders do. We are communicating with ETs. In regards to the objects that were caught by the pilots he had this to say. They may suggest that there's secret technology from China or Russia, but believe me, they know more than this. Uri said that after being contacted by military officials, he was shown some evidence of exotic materials and experiments at the Goddard Space Flight Center. He said the following, After driving with one of Ron Braun, we took three flights of stairs down into the building, and were given orange coats like the ones for Antarctic expeditions, with blue NASA badges. Heavy, thick freezer doors were opened. I couldn't believe my eyes, but I always knew it since I was five. Rory said that this meeting happened because his friend astronaut Edgar Mitchell, known for being outspoken about the topic, and believing that mysterious aircrafts are constantly visiting us, said that he needed to meet the rocket engineer as they had something interesting to show him. Rory continued with the following. To my shocking surprise, he showed me a piece of a crash UFO. When I met him, Werner von Braun took an object from a safe and presented it to me. 
He said it was a piece from a crash UFO. He wanted me to tell him what I felt from the material. I felt it wasn't terrestrial. It was metallic, elongated and had a hue I'd never seen before. The material felt like it was alive, like it was breathing. The surface had a pearl-like quality that almost seemed to be in three-dimensional colour. He also said that he studied two pipes that belonged to Albert Einstein from David Bohm, who studied him from MI5, saying that Einstein was involved with mysterious crafts, and even went on to investigate wreckages. Yuri was also part of the remote viewing program for the Central Intelligence Agency. Remote viewing is when someone is able to view a distant, unseen target from a different location, and only using their mind. From reading documents that have been released through declassified networks, it appears that the programs were a success, with the Central Intelligence Agency themselves saying they wanted to see how far they could take this. Although it's officially reported that the program was shut down, there's still some that think it was just renamed, and that it's still being used today. The Central Intelligence Agency released notes and documents about these projects, detailing that in some cases people were able to remote view and give details about objects and situations from miles away. Yuri said the following, I'm mind blown that they released this because there's still remote viewing programs active. Many intelligence agencies use them. I did many things for the Central Intelligence Agency. They wanted me to stand outside the Russian embassy in Mexico and erase floppy disks being flown out by Russian agents. I had to get near to someone signing a nuclear deal and bombard him with sign, sign, sign. Officials though said that the program was a dead end saying that a large amount of irrelevant, erroneous information is provided, and little agreement is observed among viewers' reports. The agency said that those working on the project would change results in order to fit a narrative, and that after this was found out the program was discontinued. As some have pointed out though, various times we have been told that programs were defunded and closed down, only to find out that they've been renamed under something else, and that experiments are still being conducted. This has happened various times across different countries, which is one of the reasons why people have a hard time believing things when officials say the program wasn't of interest. One document from the Central Intelligence Agency reads as follows. I'm redacted with the American Institute for Research in Washington, D.C., a company that specializes in social and behavioral research, the agency concurs with the committee's view on remote viewing that to stop its research would severely hamper US efforts to access Soviet research. Also, US efforts to keep peace with foreign researchers and to develop possible countermeasures would be adversely affected without continued funding. The current level of funding, even if extended to include FY 1980, will permit only limited gains in understanding the phenomena Prior year funds have established that remote viewing appears to be a real and usable phenomenon. Current funds will allow us to pursue further its existence and permit some exploitation into the many variables associated with its functioning. End quote. Some have said that it's hard to dispute these claims, especially when you have it in writing from the agency itself. The question that many have asked is if these are the documents that got released. It would be interesting to read the ones that will never see the light of day. Many have said it's likely that we'll never truly understand how deep this program went, the things they discovered, and whether it's still being used in the modern day. Something interesting has just been captured by a local resident in Wales. Mr Davies took the photograph in Newport, Wales. The images were captured this month and he and his friends posted them to social media. This comes after residents across the UK have reported some strange activity in the sky, and some of those who saw the photographs put forward some suggestions in order to explain it. Those who saw the images said that it could have been a fire tornado. Tornadoes cause immense strife. 
destroying buildings, farms, cars, humans and animal lives. Sometimes the horror of a tornado can be amplified by fire. As if the sheer force of air wasn't terrifying enough, the element can combine with fire and create a fire well, fire devil or fire tornado. One person said the following, Fire tornado is an event that can start very quickly, and that's what we're most likely seeing here. End quote. However, one person quickly shut this down by responding with the following. To the people that are commenting that this is a fire tornado, need to remember that this was captured in South Wales. There's never been a fire tornado recorded in Wales. In the last few days we had nothing but downpour and rain. This has nothing to do with fire. Google weather for Wales and you'll understand our average weather and humidity is a very wet place." End quote. As some suggested, tornadoes in the UK are very rare, and they don't cause anywhere near the level of destruction as some other tornadoes. For some perspective, tornadoes across the United States can cause between two to four million dollars worth of damage or tornadoes across the UK cause an average between 10 to 15,000 pounds, or $20,000 worth of damage. The cost in the UK goes towards cleaning up trees that have fallen down, any minor damage to nearby houses, and if things like flower pots have fallen over. Another person said the following about the photographs. This is definitely not a fire tornado. My partner and I live in the United States and we've seen them with our own eyes, and they don't look like this. I'm not sure what this is. It looks strange either way. End quote. As of right now, people can't seem to agree on what the photographs show. Another interesting story has just come out of Phoenix, Arizona, with residents saying that a mysterious rattle has been waking them up during the night while others have reported that they've been getting migraines ever since the rattle started. Locals have said that in the last few weeks the rattling is happening more consistently and frequently. It's led residents to complain about the noises, and even report them to the local police force. One resident said the following, It was just a jolt at first, and we'd feel it two or three times out of the year. As of yesterday, it was happening around 20 times every hour. Just a steady shake. Mr. Jackson said he's even recorded his windows rattling and said that his house is not old, saying that the windows are in good condition. Mr. Jackson's wife said the following. It rattles in the house, but not only in the house but outside it sounds like someone is jackhammering. It's very unusual but when it happens it really does scare you because you don't know if your windows are going to break or if your house is going to drop. You just don't know what it is. The family definitely know that these rattles are going on because it's causing damage, with both of them saying that cracks have started to appear around the property. They said the following, I probably have around 30 cracked tiles in different spots. Another homeowner said the following, Many of us in the neighbourhood are hearing these sounds, and it's starting to get to a lot of people. It's the constant noises that are affecting me most, but I know that some people's properties have actually been damaged by these rattles. No one seems to know where they're coming from. While this resident said the following, Lately it's been happening a lot, and it's really annoying. It's really hard to go to bed. It's just constant shaking like constant. It just doesn't stop. Mr. Jackson said the following. You get a little lethargic when it happens, like a dizzy spell comes over at first, and then it goes away real quick. But just before it hits, it's like you're not 100%. Some have compared this noise to the hum, while the residents living in the region have said that the two are different, as this constant shaking is actually causing damage to property. Residents across the United States have reported in detail a strange humming sound of unknown origin. It didn't take long, however, for this strange hum to be treated more seriously, when further reports began coming in one after the other. Nicknamed the hum, 
This strange noise was first reported back in the early 1990s, which sparked Joe Martins, a local professor of engineering at the University of New Mexico, to conduct research into the matter. He found that the hum itself could only be heard by a very select group of people, that only made up around 2% of the local population. After setting up sensitive equipment and doing extensive testing on the area, he could not find any unusual vibrations or sounds. Whether the noise itself was caused by external or internal factors was completely undetermined. Not only did this puzzle the professor, but it seemed to be an unexplainable phenomenon for other researchers who looked into the matter. To this day, reports of strange humming sounds at different times of the day have been heard, and no one finds themselves to be any closer to an answer after all these years. As of right now, it's not known where or what's causing these mysterious noises. It's fair to say that 2020 has been pretty eventful, and it's just been announced that a mysterious object has made its way close to our planet. What's interesting though is that scientists aren't sure what this object is. The object has been given the name of 2020 SO by astronomers and researchers, and they've said that the object will come within 31,000 miles of our planet. Although this sounds like it won't cause any issue for us, an object that's travelling this close to our planet has to be monitored. The object is said to pass by us today. One of the researchers who has been keeping a close eye on the object said they're not even sure what this is, saying that they're pretty sure it isn't an asteroid, going on to theorise that the object could possibly be a piece of space debris that's made its way towards our planet. Paul Chodo said that 2020 SO might actually be a central rocket booster, and this would have been from one of NASA's failed missions. It's not uncommon for NASA and other space agencies to pick up on these types of objects, with them saying that the majority of them will burn up on re-entry. Other researchers though have said that all the necessary tests need to be carried out in order to know what these objects are, saying that if something is detected that could cause harm to our planet we're on limited time. After looking through the data, Chodo said that the object has actually come close to Earth several times in the past. He went on to say the following, one of the possible paths for 2020 SO brought this object very close to Earth and the Moon in late September 1966. It was like a eureka moment when a quick check of launch dates for lunar missions showed a match with the Surveyor 2 mission. End quote. This is just one of the many objects that are currently zipping around close to our planet. Another object which astronomers have openly talked about is that of an asteroid which has been given the name of the God of Chaos or Apophis. It's currently making its way towards our planet, and it's just one of the many objects that will come close to Earth within the next few years. Most asteroids pass by us with hundreds of thousands of miles to spare, but this one is thought to come within 19,000 miles of our planet's surface, and this is if it stays on the course it's currently on, something that doesn't always happen. This is extremely close and means that scientists will have to observe the object closely, one of the worries with most of these near-Earth objects is if it does collide with our planet. This asteroid measures in at over 1,000 feet, so something of this size would easily cause a lot of damage to where it made contact. NASA said the following on their website. Asteroid 99942 Apophis is a near-Earth asteroid more than 1,000 feet in size that will pass close to Earth on April 13th, 2029. When it was discovered in 2004, the asteroid caused disturb because initial calculations indicated a small possibility it would make impact with Earth in 2029. After searching through some older astronomical images, scientists ruled out the possibility of a 2029 impact. It's now predicted the asteroid will safely pass around 19,800 miles from our planet's surface. While that's a safe distance, it's close enough that the asteroid will come between Earth and our moon, which is around 238,855 miles, or 384,400 kilometers away. It's also within the distance that some spacecrafts orbit Earth. It's rare for an asteroid of this size to pass so close to Earth, 
or those smaller asteroids in the range of 16 to 33 feet or 5 to 10 meters, have been observed passing by at similar distances. Marina Brozovic, a radar scientist at NASA's Jet Propulsion Science, said the following. The Apophis close approach in 2029 will be an incredible opportunity for science. We'll observe the asteroid with both optical and radar telescopes. With radar observations, we might be able to see surface details that are only a few meters in size. End quote. NASA continued by saying the following. During its 2029 flyby, Apophis will become visible to the naked eye in the night sky over the southern hemisphere and will look like a speck of light moving from east to west over Australia. It will be mid-morning on the US east coast when Apophis is above Australia. Apophis will then cross above the Indian Ocean, and continuing west it will cross the equator over Africa. At its closest approach to Earth just before 6pm, the asteroid will be over the Atlantic Ocean. It will move so fast that it will cross the Atlantic in just an hour. End quote. One thing astronomers and researchers have said is that it is important to conduct further tests. When they're first picked up on, the researchers are on a time limit to try and understand their flight path. Detecting a celestial body early on is essential to understand what its behavior is like. Researchers noted that back in 2018, we saw more than 91 near-miss hits of different asteroids of all sizes passing by our fragile blue planet. The worrying thing is that out of 91 asteroids that passed by us, only 30 of these asteroids were seen coming prior to their passing, and only two of those were discovered one year ahead of the near-miss event. This means that for more than 89 of the asteroids nearly striking Earth in 2018, only two of them could have been prevented with our current technology, showcasing just how threatening these large celestial bodies can be. As of right now, scientists and researchers have said it's important for us to be constantly scanning the skies. Just because we've logged thousands of these celestial objects, it doesn't mean that every one of them is accounted for. Some slip through and this could be dangerous. After all, an asteroid with a length of only a few hundred meters could potentially wipe out an entire city. It's also interesting to note that space agencies are working ways to break up asteroids if they're on a collision course. It seems like every other day people are seeing mysterious things in our sky. One of the issues we have at the moment is people can't seem to agree on what they are. We are living in strange times though. Going back 30 years ago, rarely would you get officials talking about mysterious things in our sky, but now it seems that the conversation has shifted. More officials are coming forward and questioning what these things are. According to some, UFOs have been witnessed in our sky for thousands of years, with researchers saying that things like old paintings and papyrus detail these reports, with some of them matching similar shaped crafts that have been seen in the modern day. High up officials, pilots, military personnel, and even astronauts have opened up about their encounters, something that rarely happened a few decades ago. In fact, those that did speak out about these objects were often reprimanded, demoted or in many cases losing their jobs completely. Some interesting photographs are currently being shared online that allegedly show a mysterious object in the shape of a disc. It's reported that this object came to the ground somewhere in Mexico, with locals saying that black helicopters and police were on the scene immediately. Residents though were able to get in there and take some photographs, with some reporting that officers had a hard time keeping people back. As with most of these photographs, it's important to keep an open mind, but like some of the residents said, if this was nothing, then why were they pushing people away with force? The photographs show what looked like a UFO in the shape of a disc, with others saying that when you zoom in on some of the images, it looks like this thing crashed into the ground. Others agreed with this and said that whatever this thing is, it's clearly taken some damage, pointing out that a huge chunk of the craft is missing. Others noted that the craft was giving off a strange humming sound at the time it was recovered, with locals saying the area was heavily guarded. One person said the following, This is interesting. 
Could this craft be something like a drone? It's quite small and looks the part. I'm sure that our military doesn't have anything in the shape of this. Also, the size of it is a big problem. If it was bigger, the argument could be made that an engine was inside, and this was part of a military test, but that doesn't seem to be the case. I definitely don't think it's a drone either. Never seen one in the shape of this. It could be the case that someone made this to look like a UFO. But if this was the case, why so many police? And why black helicopters? End quote. Another person said this. That dent in the front of the craft is interesting. It definitely doesn't look like this thing is made of weak material. End quote. Some UFO researchers who saw the images backed the idea of this thing being a scout and said that these are the crafts that the majority of people see. They are small and nearly impossible to photograph. They said that something interesting went down in Mexico. UFO researchers also said that how the government handles UFO sightings throughout the area is much different than the United States, saying that it takes much longer for officials to get there and this means that people who are close to the area are able to get in and take photographs. As with most of these images, believers said they don't really tell us much, with skeptics pointing out that although the images are interesting and seem to suggest that a UFO hit the ground, all we have is an object that looks to be in the shape of a UFO. We can't gather any more information for them. This isn't the only strange thing that happened in Mexico recently, with some residents saying that they've heard loud noises. Those who have heard it have described them as a loud boom, and say they don't sound like anything they've heard before. One resident close to Morlia said they heard the noise during the early hours of the morning. The woman said it was very loud, but it didn't sound like a typical explosion. She said the event happened at 1.15am on the 6th of April, and this was back in 2020. She went on to say that she heard it once more during the early hours of the morning. Other residents close to Mexico City back up these claims, saying that they heard the sounds around midnight. One man said the loud boom was high in the sky, and that whatever caused it was loud. He said that after the initial boom there was another strange noise that followed. He described it as sounding similar to a loud trumpet. It seems though that not many people reported this event. Only a few others came forward and reported the mysterious sound. Although a lot of people didn't hear it or witness it, others said this isn't the first time that an event like this has been reported. Even NASA got involved and said the following. We could actually hear the typical strains of symphony and the sound of strange storms coming from our planet, and not an alien spaceship. End quote. UFO researchers though said that sometimes when strange objects are seen or picked up on radar, the military will send out jets to go and investigate, and sometimes these jets create loud booms, and this is what people are hearing. One person was not happy with the explanation that this is a natural occurrence, and said the following, I have seen many theories regarding the mysterious sounds coming from the sky, and they're all very contradicting to one another. Various people would have us believe these sounds are a reoccurring natural phenomena, but if that were true, where is the documentation? Where's the proof this is happening all the time in nature? Not only that, but on other sites and organisations, along with personal statements from citizens, many would have us believe these noises are due to construction work and machinery. If that were true, then the company in control should have made a public statement regarding the noises, saying that it's them that are wrecking havoc around the world. There are no reliable facts or honest information regarding this unusual situation. End quote. Recently, Mars has been featured a lot in the mainstream media, and this is because big space companies hope to put humans on the red planets within the next few years. Someone who's been very vocal about this is Elon Musk with him saying that his company SpaceX has plans to be one of the first ones to land humans on the red planet. 
He is currently working with experts and astrophysicists that are in the process of devising new ways to replenish the Martian atmosphere. Not only that, but they also plan to repair the planet's ecosystem to make it sustainable for human life, and they hope to have achieved this by 2030. If this fails, NASA have also said that they are looking at putting humans on the red planet, saying that they again hope to do this by 2030. But some of these dates have been pushed back with everything that's currently going on in the world, with NASA saying it's important that everything is understood about this mission before we just jump in. Government officials were noted as saying that American astronauts will walk on the moon again before the end of 2024 by any means necessary, and that they hope to set up bases on the moon and use it as a kind of halfway point, and then from there launching onto Mars. It all sounds very exciting, but some researchers have said that it will be at least 10 years before anything happens, and that's as long as scientists don't hit any snags along the way. Although no humans have made it onto Mars, some things have, and these come in the form of large rovers that have been sending back important information for scientists to study. However, every so often one of these rovers will send back an interesting image, and one of these came in the form of a strange looking object that could be seen in the sky. Those who noticed the object said it looked like a UFO. Now before we carry on, NASA and other officials have said that UFOs are not real, and that they can be explained using everyday things, like smudges on cameras, space debris and pareidolia. But that hasn't stopped amateur researchers from looking through old images in the hopes of finding something strange. Those who have seen this object have said it resembles a disc, one of the most commonly reported UFOs. In recent years people have been more open minded about the topic of unidentified flying objects, saying that even government officials are now joining in on the discussion. As of right now space agencies haven't released any information, and if anything have disagreed with government's opinions, saying that they've never seen anything that resembles a UFO but amateur researchers have said that these comments are hard to believe when there's so much proof out there. Interestingly, this isn't the first time that a strange photograph has been taken on the Martian surface. NASA uploaded this photograph to their website and said the following. This image was taken by front hazard avoidance camera Front Hascam, and this was on board NASA's Mars rover Curiosity on Solar Day 2662 taken on the dates 2020-02-01. However, it's the anomaly in the left hand corner that's caught people's attention. You can see what appears to be a black sphere shaped object hovering in the sky, causing some to suggest that this anomaly is an unidentified flying object. As of right now we don't have much information to go by, but images like these start interesting conversations about life possibly being on other planets. This isn't the only claim of there being alleged life on Mars. Perhaps one of the more well known photographs allegedly showing something mysterious on the red planet is that of the Mars Rat. The photograph depicting an alleged rodent was named the Mars Rat, and the internet went wild with theories as to why the creature was there in the first place. It was picked up by UFO researchers a few years back and they suggested that the animal was placed on the Martian surface in order to see the effects the planet has on live animals. However, Joy Crisp, who was the Curiosity's deputy project scientist of NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory at the time said the following. Clearly it results from things like wind erosion and mechanical abrasion, and breakdown chemical weathering on the rocks. This is why they get these weird shapes. End quote. Although the idea of going to Mars sounds exciting, there's many people who have spoken out about these missions, saying that it's going to cost us billions of dollars to do this, and when we're there we'll have to completely change Mars's environment so it's livable for humans. People criticise these actions saying there's still a lot of work to be done here on Earth, and those billions of dollars that are being spent on these missions could go towards helping a lot of people. Whether you believe in some of the things that scientists have said, there's no denying that within the last 20 years alone we've depleted many things, whether that's general space on our planet or the consumption of animals. There's currently around 7.6 billion people in the world right now, and when you compare that to just 20 years ago it's estimated there were 5.8 billion people. 
is an interesting argument, and perhaps this is the way that officials are going to deal with this, by sending humans to Mars. The more we've studied Mars, the more we've learned about its various changes over the years. For example, many years ago, scientists said that Mars would have been uninhabitable, but researchers showed us that at one point in time, Mars would have had conditions suitable for life. This is evident in water flow that can be seen on the surface of Mars. NASA scientists have said there's over 100 billion planets in the Milky Way galaxy alone. There's hundreds of billions of galaxies, all teeming with millions or billions of planets. This makes the likelihood of there being life in our universe very high. This is why NASA and other space agencies are now making it their goal to visit various systems in the hopes of finding life. It's likely it will happen. The question is when and how long it will take. For all we know, there could be life only a couple of million miles away, where it could be hundreds of billions of miles away. And when you're talking about space, billions of miles is a very small distance. Many will agree that Bigfoot is the most famous of all the cryptids. This mysterious giant humanoid has been in the mainstream media for the last few decades, and although science is firm on their belief that the creature is a hoax, many interesting reports have surfaced over the years. These creatures always follow a similar theme, looking like a giant ape-like human and being very tall. Depending on who you talk to depends on the creature's height, but most can agree that Bigfoot's average height is between 7 and 10 feet tall. At the height of the Bigfoot craze, various expeditions were put together by various companies from across the world. It was almost like a battle of who could capture the best Bigfoot evidence first. Kind of similar to the space race, but instead of landing on the moon, this involved a mythical creature that had allegedly been witnessed for thousands of years. All over the planet, people have been reporting these creatures with some finding some giant footprints, to a few being able to photograph the creature. The most interesting stories though comes from those people who've had first-hand experience with the creature. One of the issues people have though is that the large majority of these stories have no evidence, but every so often a story will be told that has evidence to back it up. In the last few days, these fascinating images have been making the rounds online. I was able to speak to the person who captured the images, and he's allowed me to share his story. Mr. Yeoman said the following about the event. Here's the story with my photos. My wife and I bought 11 acres of land in Bailey, Colorado. We built a foundation of cylinder block that is six feet above the ground. The land is mostly hard packed dirt and large rock, which I shared a video of when we bought it. After we moved our modular home there, we lived off and on there for two years. This was while we got ready for permanent residency. In August 2017, we were finishing off the interior of the back of the house and I came into the living room and caught a whiff of a very harsh odour in the room. It smelled like rotting animal flesh, vomit and excrement. I caught a glimpse of something moving outside the window from the corner of my eye. We have had bears visit pretty regular, but they tried to get under the house, not in it but when I saw the figure by the window, I thought it was a bear, and that it had somehow climbed up the window. I take a lot of wildlife pictures because they literally come up to the outside of it. This includes animals such as mule deer, elk and bears. However, I haven't seen any mountain lion and other small game. I've quite a few cars all over my property, but they aren't mine, but they hang out there a lot. Going back to the creature, I saw the top of the head and it caught my attention. It moved closer and I could see that its eyes were huge. This scared me because bear eyes aren't that large or far apart. I always have a camera handy to get a good shot of the elk when they come close to the house. When I realised it wasn't a bear, fear struck me. I used a cheap Kodak sport digital camera for taking pictures, and for the most part it takes fast action pictures and videos. It was on the end of the table next to my recliner approximately 6 feet from the window. When I pointed it at the window, it stopped swaying and closed its eyes as if it was a child. It reminded me of when children do that thing, you can't see me if my eyes are closed. I was shaking a lot and trying to video at the same time. I moved back a step and it slowly moved from one side of the window to the other. 
It was seriously around a 10 minute video, but it was on a small card which had to be downloaded onto my computer. It didn't make any attempt to enter the house or run away. Around 8 minutes in my wife came into the room and asked what I was doing. I told her there's something outside and it wasn't no bear. When she looked over my shoulder she screamed what is that thing and ran back into the bedroom. I stopped the video, went to the closet and grabbed my 40 cal off the shelf. When I turned back around it was moving away from the window. I wasn't going to shoot at it unless it tried to get in which it didn't do. I went to my wife who was freaking out and tried to answer her bombardment of questions and tried to reassure her that everything was okay. She called the sheriff's department and they sent three deputies to check out the property. Their conclusion was that it was most likely a bear or other wildlife. This was however until I showed them the playback. When they reviewed it two of the three were impressed and the third just said it was a bear. The rest of the night was uneventful and peaceful other than my wife panicking. She ended up having my daughter and her husband come and get her and they took her to Golden for a couple of days. I downloaded this video onto my computer at my mother's house. This was because she had internet access and I didn't. Long story short, my mother's house burnt down in a fire we had out there last year. We have seen it at a distance every now and then in the darkness by the firelight. Not the body but the eye shine, and that's pretty creepy too. But I haven't had any instance of a destructive nature. So I decided just to be cautious when I'm walking my property. I do carry my 40 cal always outside. This is just in case but I haven't had to pull it from my holster. I see signs where he's broke branches on trees that I can't reach on a 6 foot ladder and occasionally he'll move things around. Most signs we see were after we left and came back home. There's the story behind the photos. I hope people can find something in there to benefit them if they're dealing with one too. These pictures were taken from the video to show the best shots because I was shaking like hell. Many people came forward and said that they believe what Mr. Yeoman saw and even told of similar encounters. Many people on Bigfoot forums have said that they are by far the best Bigfoot photographs they have seen and that they believe his story to be genuine. It doesn't sound like he's trying to convince anyone about what happened, but rather just putting his encounter out there for others to hear. There are many areas stretching across North America that are often referred to as being hotspots for seeing a Bigfoot. These locations have been named by the Bigfoot community and every year people have come forward with their own sightings of the creature. According to many Bigfoot experts, these concentrated areas get the highest amount of reports of a Sasquatch creature and can span over the course of several years with reoccurring sightings of the creature. Interestingly, researchers have said that these creatures don't just go by the name of Bigfoot and there's actually different species of these large humanoids that roam our planet. One of them goes by the name of the Grassman and these creatures are usually seen close to Ohio. Often encountered in the woods of this region is that of a cryptid that's commonly been referred to by the locals as the Grassman Monster. The Grassman Monster, also known as the Orangite, is a massively large and hairy man-like creature that many have compared to that of Sasquatch sightings. Unlike many of the other Bigfoot sightings all across the world, it appears that the Grassman cryptid is far more dangerous and has a number of strange behaviours that make it unique to all other Sasquatch creatures. Many that have claimed to have stumbled across the beast while hiking through the forest claim the Grassman is capable of constructing small huts and areas for living, a unique behaviour that has never been reported surrounding that of the Sasquatch species. It's because of this strange behaviour that many report the creature is not that of a Sasquatch and of a different cryptid entirely. The first well reported sighting of the Grassman monster happened back in 1978. This was when several kids ran into their home and alerted their grandparents that a hairy man was digging through a rubbish pit. When the grandparents went to investigate what was being claimed, they saw the large grass man as he was digging through rubbish looking for food. However, the large creature soon ran away after being spotted by the adults. As research continued in the area surrounding that of the grass man, people began to report spotting a large ape-like creature living in huts made of tall grass only to come back to the site later to find it completely abandoned 
with the creature moving to new areas after being spotted. One person said the following about the photographs. These photos look exactly like what I saw while camping with my friends. When I first looked at the photographs it sent shivers down my spine. The resemblance to the creature I saw is uncanny. I immediately showed my friends this photograph and they began to freak out. Our encounter happened back in 2017 while camping in Pennsylvania. We planned to stay for a day or two as we hadn't seen each other for a while. We set up camp and started to get a fire going. While it was getting dark we started to talk about more out there topics and this led on to us each giving details about the mysterious things we'd seen during our lives. I hadn't seen anything strange myself but my friends had experienced some weird stuff during their lives. While one of my friends was halfway through their story we could hear these strange noises coming from the woods. If I had to describe I would say it sounded like a low grunting sound. I told the group that it was most likely some type of wildlife. This noise continued but we wasn't worried as it sounded like it was quite far away. Around 15 minutes later after those noises started they completely stopped. However, after a few minutes a loud screech could be heard coming from behind our camp. This noise was really loud and it made us all jump. I'd never heard anything like this before, and judging by my friends' faces, neither had they. We all froze in place hoping that whatever just made those noises wouldn't do it again. We could hear some noises coming from behind the woods, so one of my friends grabbed their torch and shined it in the direction of the noises. This was when we got a sight of the creature making the loud noises, and it was something that none of us had seen before. The only way I can describe it is that it looked like a giant hairy ape-like human. After we shone the light in the direction of the humanoid it soon ran off. After this we all jumped in the car leaving behind the majority of our belongings. Whatever we'd encountered left a mark on all of us. This wasn't something we were laughing about, it had a lasting effect on all of us to the point where I didn't want to leave the house for several months. I was genuinely scared by whatever this creature was. I still have its image in my mind. I don't think it's something that I'm going to forget anytime soon. As of right now I've never seen anything similar. This is because I won't venture near any woodland areas. I think that these creatures do exist, and I'm the first to admit that before my sighting I never believed they existed. I thought they were made up by people, but now I've seen one with my own eyes it's completely changed my view on them. I have no idea why it didn't attack us as this thing was massive. If I had to guess I would say it was easy over 7 feet in height. It possessed a very wide frame and had long brown hair. As of today I think that what I witnessed was a Bigfoot. Back in 2017 a series of strange photographs were shared online. They showed what looked like large structures on the moon's surface. Those who went on to further investigate the claims said that six towers had been discovered on the moon, and after these photographs were shared online people started to give their opinions on what they thought they were. The images were taken from Google Moon, which is collected by NASA satellites orbiting the moon, and taking images of the lunar surface, appear to show what people say are large looking structures. One commenter said they'd been placed there and that they definitely weren't natural. Users then started to do their own research, and it turned out that more of these large structures were found. One person used a measuring tool and said the structures measured in at 3.7 kilometers, or 2.2 miles in height. So whatever these things are, they're not small. This then caused some to question whether NASA had picked up on these before with one person saying the following. These structures are over two miles in height. I fail to believe that NASA or other space agencies haven't picked up on them yet. Why have they kept quiet about these giant things coming out of the moon's surface? They literally look like towers. End quote. However, some spoke out about these discoveries and said that Google Moon isn't the most reliable tool. Others though carried on from this and said that similar looking structures have been found on the moon's surface. Believers though have said that saying these structures are glitches is just lazy, and is used as a way to avoid answering and researching further what these things are. 
with another person saying the following. I'm starting to see a theme here when it comes to these anomalies. Whenever one is found, you never hear the space agency reply with open arms. They immediately debunk it, and I find that interesting because, according to them, they've only seen these discoveries when people have shown them it. So how can you debunk something that you've only just seen? It seems like that happens with everything that's slightly mysterious these days. Instead of being interested and wanting to investigate further, all these agencies say is that is a glitch, or a camera anomaly. At this point it feels pointless to even show them this stuff because you know what answer they'll give. End quote. Another thing that people are talking about again is that of the strange object that was seen flying through our solar system. This object went by the name of Oumuamua. A.V. Loeb, who is the chair of Harvard's Department of Astronomy, claims that he thinks he found proof of extraterrestrials, and this comes in the form of some garbage. He has an upcoming book titled Extraterrestrial, The First Sign of Intelligent Life Beyond Earth, and in it he details that a mysterious object that made its way into our solar system may be proof of extraterrestrials. It's not very often that you get high-up officials talk about this subject. However, this year alone, many government officials have been quite vocal about the UFO phenomena, and have stated in recent years that unidentified crafts have been detected in our skies, and that these objects need to be taken more seriously. The objects the professor is talking about immediately displayed some strange signs, and this caused scientists and researchers from around the world to speculate what it was. The object was given the name of a muamua, but the professor has given some examples of why this object might not be a space rock, and that it could actually be a piece of alien technology. On the 19th of October 2017, we were visited by something that scientists couldn't initially explain. It was called a muamua, and astronomers first noticed this object traveling through our solar system. The object in question had come from another solar system, and people quickly started to speculate what the object was. It could be seen travelling around the sun and then shooting away again. However, after this it was not to return. Astronomers were able to record data on the object for a short period of time, with them saying that the mysterious object had been in our solar system for over a century. The reason a muamua wasn't spotted until 2017 is because it wasn't close enough to reflect enough light for astronomers to pick it up. Even when it did get close, it was moving very fast, and meant astronomers had very little time to observe it. Once the strange object flew around the sun, it was going further away, meaning it was getting fainter and fainter. The astronomers' last observation from Hubble were on the 2nd of January 2018. On the 3rd of May, it was then seen outside of Jupiter's orbit. Interestingly though, some have said there's not just one Oumuamua. There's tools that can be used to help us view the wonders of the universe, and one of the most popular ones is that of Google Sky. Google decided they wanted somewhere where people could explore the far reaches of the universe. Using Google Sky, you can see many famous celestial bodies, and over the years it's provided us with some breathtaking views. However, some who've used this software have said they found some interesting things. This Google Sky discovery had some saying that it looked very similar to a muamua, which gained popularity as being the first known interstellar object that was detected traveling through our solar system. This recent photograph has caused some to suggest whether this and a muamua are the same thing suggesting that these mysterious interstellar objects are scattered throughout our solar system. This particular one was discovered close to the Orion constellation. The person who discovered the object said they were messing around with Google Sky, and zoomed in really quickly on Orion. They took a screenshot of the object as they thought it looked interesting and then shut it down. They then showed a few people and it was them who made the connection between the two objects. One of the first things you'll notice is that they're very similar in appearance, and interestingly this isn't the only one that's been discovered that has a similar appearance to a muamua. Back in 2015, 
NASA uploaded around 13,000 Apollo photographs online. But it didn't take long for amateur researchers to find some interesting anomalies in these photographs. One photograph that got shared on various websites was this one that was taken back in 1972. The photo in question was taken during Apollo 17, and shows the moon's surface nearby hills in the backdrop of space. However, when online users zoomed in to one section of the photograph, they discovered some strange looking lines. Amateur researchers who first saw these said the lights in question were clearly in the shape of a triangle, and since being shared, various UFO researchers came out and suggested that NASA was being watched while on the moon. The lights can be seen in the top right hand corner of the photograph, and when you zoom in you can see that the lights were blue in colour, and in the shape of a triangle. UFO researchers have long said that strange triangle shaped crafts have been witnessed by humans for decades. However, amateur researchers that have looked into the phenomena have said this has been going on for a long time, saying that various photographs exist that show these strange triangle shaped crafts. 99% of the photographs shared though show these objects on Earth, so how do you explain this object hovering above the moon? One believer said the following, UFO researchers have done some incredible work in recent years, and this is one of the gems that's been discovered in some of the older NASA photographs that's been shared. There's no denying that this object is clearly triangular in shape, Whatever this thing is, it matches the very same objects that are seen on our planet. End quote. Other researchers who have spent countless hours looking at old NASA photographs have said this is some of the best proof we have of these crafts on the moon, and go on to say that usually NASA edits out these objects in their images, but in this case they likely forgot. This is one of the reasons why UFO researchers say the International Space Station is one of the best places to see UFOs, because it's really hard for NASA to edit out these crafts that come into the camera's view, so what they do is shut off the live cams claiming that the signal got dropped. Skeptics though don't buy into the idea that UFOs can be seen above the moon, and close to the International Space Station, instead they say the majority of these lights can be easily explained and that what people are seeing is things like lens flares and other debris that make their way in front of their cameras. Even NASA themselves have said these objects that people call UFOs are just space debris, and when they get up close to their cameras they can take on the appearance of a UFO. Interestingly though, black triangles aren't anything new. Black triangle UFOs are a type of craft that have been seen in our sky for years now, and after years of research, the most likely answer is that these crafts belong to the military. However, even though some believe that it's our military that owns these crafts, there's still many unanswered questions. For example, how they're able to travel at the speeds they do, how they're able to use camouflage tag, and how they can hover motionless without making a sound. It's these questions that have led some to say that these crafts don't belong to us. After all, we currently don't have any aircraft that's able to match what these crafts do. These black triangles are hundreds of years more advanced than our current tank. So where did these things come from? And how are they able to achieve what they do? At this moment in time, no military has come forward to claim that it's them who's behind these sightings. But most UFO researchers think these black triangles are part of a secret program. And this is their latest creation. However, sightings and encounters have gone against this, saying that these crafts have been observed in our skies for decades. In fact, there's even photographs of these triangles that were taken above Italy in 1945, so that means these black triangles are over 80 years old. How did we have this type of tech during a time when battles were taking place using basic aeroplanes? As mentioned, it's one of the reasons that UFO researchers believe these things don't belong to us. In fact, even military officials would come forward in detail their encounter with them, demanding an answer for what they encountered in the sky. Many of these eyewitnesses would say these triangle objects seem interested in their crafts. Then when they tried to get closer, they suddenly vanished, easily being much faster than the planes during those times. 
Interestingly, this led to these objects being given the name of Foo Fighters. Strange technological advances were witnessed by United States airmen. They claim to have witnessed countless encounters with unidentified flying objects. Described as cigar-shaped rocket-like crafts and dark triangles on the late November evening back in 1944, the 415th Night Fighter Squadron reported a number of peculiar lines, and this happened along the Rhine Valley Ridge. As the Night Fighter Squadron turned to attack the craft, the lights faded and appeared to have disappeared from the region entirely. This was one of a countless number of military reports that described similar-looking, unidentified flying objects, with one of the strangest reports being the witness account of Lieutenant Samuel A. Cransley. According to Cransley's report, as he was flying, he noticed a large wingless cigar-shaped object with a reddish glow, floating alongside him just a few yards away, seemingly attached by an invisible wire, which maintained a perfect distance and speed. Cransney went into invasive manoeuvres, and rolled the plane while dropping down to get away from the craft, only to witness the cigar-shaped object follow his manoeuvres perfectly, and maintain its position relative to his aeroplane. After several minutes of additional manoeuvres, Cransley said the object suddenly faded in colour, and shot off at an incredible speed. So it seems that these strange triangle-shaped crafts aren't anything new and have been sighted by people for at least the last 70 years. For years, people have been detailing their encounters with Bigfoot. This elusive creature has divided people over the years. Some think that the humanoid exists in small groups, while others have said that it's not possible that such a large humanoid exists. They point to the fact there would need to be a large group of them to survive, and if this was the case, they would be reported a lot more often. Others, however, disagree with this notion, and have said that for thousands of years now, man has been encountering these giants. All over the globe, there have been reports of them, from Tibet, America, and even Australia. There's no shortage of stories. Ancient myths credit these creatures as having run-ins with humans, and when this happens, it doesn't usually end well. Some have even managed to record some of their mysterious calls, and when given to scientists, they've said that humans are unable to make these kinds of noises. One of the things that researchers have struggled to do, however, is present hard evidence. Although cars and footprints have been taken in various national parks across the world, researchers and skeptics have said these can easily be faked, and that it doesn't prove that an unknown humanoid is walking our planet. What's interesting though is discoveries have been made by some that could counter this argument. One of these comes in the form of an actual hand. The photograph was posted with the following statement. As if 2020 couldn't get any more strange, a buddy of mine found what appears to be a Bigfoot hand getting chewed on by a cougar. When the photograph reached Bigfoot groups it generated a lot of discussion, with the majority of people believing that this hand was the real deal and that it did belong to a genuine Bigfoot. As some have pointed out, it's not known what happened to the hand after the photo was taken, but some reports suggest that the cougar returned to finish off the meal. One of the biggest questions when it comes to Bigfoot is why we don't see their remains. Some have pointed out that if they're sharing our planet, we should be seeing them more often. Bigfoot researchers have countered this though and explained they stay away from humans further saying that they inhabit the dense forest regions of our planet, being mostly found in national parks and other large forested areas. Some noted, however, that every so often someone will come across Bigfoot remains, but they have usually been chewed up by a local predator. Others went on to say that they have seen similar looking things while exploring national parks. So is this the proof that we've finally been waiting for? Well, according to some, no. Some have offered an explanation for what we're seeing. One idea is that instead of belonging to Bigfoot, it actually belongs to a beaver. Some, however, have said the object appears to be too big to fit the description of a beaver. As of right now though, not much information has been released about the photograph, so a positive ID cannot be assigned to the hand. 
Interestingly, many have reported their own sightings in national parks across the planet. Going back, the Washington State Department of Transportation posted the following on Twitter. Sasquatch spotted. I'm not superstitious, just a little stitious. Have you noticed something strange on our Sherman Pass SR-20 webcam before? If you look close by the trees on the left, there looks to be something. Might be a Sasquatch. We'll leave that up to you. One person went on to say the following. Is the story that is a cardboard cutout that you guys put there because you were bored and wanted to generate some social media presence? To which the Washington State Department of Transportation replied with the following. It's not a cardboard cutout. I've never been up to the camera. There have been items put in front of cameras by locals in the area for 15 plus years. Just happened to notice this the other day when I was going to give a road conditions update on the pass. Then this happened. They also said that it wasn't photoshopped. One person said the following. Although this photo may turn out to be fake, I've seen many mysterious creatures in this region. I'm someone that spent over 20 years in the outdoors and I've only encountered four of them. They are very elusive. They'll be gone before you can get close to them. This is why they are notoriously difficult to photograph. I've tried every single time I encountered one, and each time the photograph looks terrible. They move fast and are usually too far away to be picked up in a detailed image. I have no doubt in my mind that these ancient creatures exist in small clusters around our planet. I think soon that we will get proof. However, in all my experiences they don't seem keen on humans, and always try their best to keep a distance. Others however said the image showed gaps in the trees, and this is creating an illusion that something is there. Perhaps one of the most interesting Bigfoot stories is that of Albert Osman. The year was 1924. The gold rush may have been over, but that did not stop Swedish immigrant Albert Osman from giving gold prospecting a go. After spending years in construction and logging, Osman decided it was time for something different and he thought he might as well get a little vacation out of it while he was at it. He had heard a rumour of a gold mine near Toba Inlet, near Vancouver, BC, Canada. The area was lush with trees and surrounded by mountains, the perfect getaway from his recent year-long construction job. He hired a local indigenous man as a guide to the head of the Toba Inlet. The guide was a talkative man and told Osman tales of the area, one tale even involved the alleged gold mine. According to him, there was a heavy drinking white man who had come and go from the mine, always having gold to spare. But one time he never came back from the mine. They suspected that a Sasquatch had taken him out. He described the creature as having hair all over his body, but stood upright like people. And they were big, approximately eight feet tall big enough to leave two foot long tracks. Osman had never heard of such a creature and brushed the tales aside as folklore. Once the guard had dropped him at the site, Osman asked him to come back for him in three weeks. He would camp back at that particular spot once he was finished with his prospecting trip. Over the next week, he worked his way over ten miles into the wilderness on the hunt for the elusive gold mine. After some time, he came to the spot that he deemed perfect for his permanent setup. He was only there one single night when strange things started to happen. Osman awoke after a deep, heavy sleep to discover that his entire campsite had been disturbed. He hadn't heard anything the night before and blamed it on an animal. On night two, his backpack had been emptied. He noted that food had been taken. Instead of going out to look for gold, Osman hung around the camp, hoping to catch a glimpse of the culprit, but nothing showed itself. On the third night, he was determined to stay awake. He needed to know what was lurking in the darkness around his sight. That, however, proved to be impossible. Having obviously fallen asleep, he was awoken by something picking him off the ground, still cocooned in his sleeping bag. 
after being dragged and carried for what he believes was three hours, Osman was finally dropped. He described hearing four voices, speaking in a language he didn't understand, but it was too dark to make them out. As the sun came up, however, he got a good look. There was four of them, and he described them as an old man and an old woman, along with a young boy and a girl. He estimated the old woman to be over seven feet tall and 500 pounds. The old man was even bigger than that. He was sure that his gun would not affect the large man, except for maybe angering him. So he sat and contemplated his escape. The family of Sasquatch kept him in a small valley for days, occasionally bringing him sweet roots as food. The young one who started out shy eventually took an interest in him. He made them water ladles and tossed them old snuff cans to play with, and that's when he came up with his escape plan. He'd once heard a story of a man blinding a bull by throwing snuff into his eyes. Next, he threw the young boy Sasquatch another snuff box, this time with a teaspoon of snuff inside it. The boy tasted the snuff and then took it to the old man. It was obvious they enjoyed the taste of it and came back for more. Osman then knew he had to get the old man to eat the whole box of snuff, and then hopefully he could escape. Because of the interest in the snuff, the old man kept getting closer to Osman, eventually grabbing a box and pouring it into his mouth. He swallowed it in one gulp, before licking the box clean. After a few minutes, the old man became sick. Osman saw this opening and ran. Using his rifle, he shot warning shots as he escaped. He miraculously was not followed. He made his way down the mountain and finally into a nearby camp. He merely told the locals that he was lost, and did not mention the sight of a Sasquatch until much later fearing being called crazy. Needless to say, he never tried prospecting again. A resident in Yarmouth, Nova Scotia, managed to capture a video of a strange object descending from the sky. After posting it on social media, people started to give their opinions on what they thought the object was. Some suggested that the object is an unidentified flying object, while others said it could be a plane. However, some couldn't seem to agree on the shape of the object, with one person saying the object looked like a large cigar, while others said it was far too big to be a plane. One person said that going back a while ago there was a UFO that was seen coming through the clouds that came close to a plane, and that these photographs reminded them of that. Others followed on from this and said that this object does match descriptions of certain UFOs. One person in the group said the following, I saw that when I was heading to Liverpool yesterday. I thought it was a plane going down. End quote. While this person said the following, I saw something in the area of Yarmouth but didn't manage to snap any photographs. These are some clear photos you captured. I just hope this is a UFO and not a plane going down. End quote. However, other people who claimed to have seen it said it looked nothing like a plane, and at some points it was even hovering in the sky and then descending. They even went on to say that it looked like at one point the object was releasing things into the sky. The individual who took these photographs also sent me some videos.
so many times in the past have interesting characters claimed impossible creature sightings and other fantastic phenomena. Facing the blunt criticisms of people claiming their information was far from factual, only to be proven legitimate later down the line, with none of the credit. An example of such a report was made surrounding an elusive creature known as the African Unicorn, of which would later become a proven species now known as the Akapi, that many researchers had denied existed within the Congo. Another example is the existence of the Ether, proven by Nikola Tesla with his advancements in radio wave technology, only to have the name be recognised as the Electromagnetic Spectrum, despite Nikola Tesla naming it the Ether, for its ether properties and ancient magic references, an effort made to delegitimize his claims of mysticism. The first report we'll be taking a look at is that of Bigfoot. I often get emails sent to me by you guys about strange things you've managed to capture. One that was sent to me a while back included an interesting photograph. The sender started off by saying they work in California, and they often find themselves outdoors. This is due to their job. On this particular occasion, they was with their friend out in the sticks when they came across something they couldn't explain. The person details how their friend called them over because he'd found something interesting. At first, the pair couldn't understand what they were looking at. They could only describe it as being the arm of a large humanoid. After the friend kicked it, they could see the arm was almost double the size of that of an average man's. It had brown fur and seemed to be missing the thumb, although the bone was still present. The friends then remembered they had a piece of black tarpaulin in their trunk. They got it and then kicked the arm onto it, noting it was very hairy and they could even see the tendons running through the hand. Although this story sounds incredible, various people throughout the years have tried to fake evidence in regards to Bigfoot. Footprints and other body parts have been found all across the world, and one thing that genuine researchers have noticed is that there's been a huge surge in fakes in the last few years alone. One of the issues is that it's easy to fake evidence. Bigfoot molds can be purchased online which can be used to create tracks. Regardless of this, there's still those that take the existence of this creature seriously. The Sasquatch creature seems to stand somewhere between 8 and 10 feet tall. Some witness accounts have claimed the creature stood at nearly 15 feet tall, however, so variation in height amongst the species could be a factor. It's for this reason that the Sasquatch is expected to have an aging development similar to humans, and most likely being birthed in the same way humans are. The creature is believed to have a total arm length of 120% the height of its body, similar to that of ape-like creatures with elongated forearms. Unlike an ape, however, the creature is believed to be bipedal. The bipedal nature of the creature most likely points to the theory of a working voice box, as the head would need to be in a position that allows for bipedal movement. Further evidence shows that the Sasquatch has a massive big toe to help with balancing issues, with it being nearly three times in volume in comparison to the size when adjusted for human scale. The Sasquatch also seems to be covered in hair all over its body. Nearly everyone around the world has heard of Bigfoot, or a creature similar in design and behaviour to Bigfoot. This leads to a tremendous amount of reports, witness sightings, video evidence, physical evidence, footprints and theories into the creature that cannot be entirely explored within this document. Throughout the video, we'll be taking a look at the most convincing pieces of evidence surrounding Bigfoot, and what each piece of evidence helps to contribute to the theories surrounding this creature. Back in 1925, a private photographer of whom was a proud and widely respected member of the Royal Geological Society, named N. A. Tombazi, wrote an incredible report that first popularised the Sasquatch creature, and eventually led to his own reputation later being completely destroyed. It was common for Tom Barzi to find himself in strange, isolated places around the world, as he would often spend countless days alone in an effort to catalogue geographical strata, or find new gorges or valleys in the hopes of making revolutionary geographical scientific discoveries in the field. As he found himself exploring the area deep within the Zimu Glacier, 
Tom Barsley claimed to have spotted a rather strange creature standing no more than 200 to 300 yards away from him. The creature, as he described, appeared to be that of a humanoid creature, in which he writes in his reports as the following. Unquestionably, the figure in the outline was exactly like a human being, walking upright and stopping occasionally to pull at some short bushes. It shows up dark against the snow as far as I could make out, and it wore no clothes of any kind. The sighting of the creature continued for a minute before the creature ran off and disappeared completely from his sight. Baffled by the sighting, he quickly gathered as much data and information as he could. He noted he was approximately 15,000 feet above sea level, and gathered information about the bushes, plant life and environment of the region. Shortly after this gathered information, Tom Barzi left the area to locate his companions. When he returned roughly two hours later, Tom Barzi and his companions scored the mountain and found evidence of footprints, in which he described as being similar to that of a man in shape. However, the feet appeared to be seven inches long and four inches wide, but were undoubtedly that of a bipedal creature. It was his written report and gathered evidence that helped to lay the foundation for what would later be considered the Yeti or Sasquatch creature, and would lead to the first expeditions into uncovering the truth. It was not until the early 1950s that the nationwide headlines began running the story of the mysterious and elusive Yeti creature, that many would later go on to compare to the unending amount of Sasquatch sightings made all throughout the United States. Back in 1951, a group of hikers were already making headlines for their attempt to scale Mount Everest, and the endless amount of training they had taken to see the journey to the end of their life-threatening trip. The group came well prepared with the equipment and mental fortitude necessary for their expedition to be seen as a success, but most importantly in order to prove their climb, they brought along a state-of-the-art camera to take high-quality photographs once they reached the mountain's peak. In direct conflict to their major achievement, the headlines that ran all across the country after the group had finished their ascent was not that of their incredible trek to the top of the world's tallest mountain, but rather that of their incredibly high quality images, that they had snapped of what appears to be anatomically correct footprints of a strange humanoid-like creature living at an incredibly high altitude in the region. The footprints were originally found by Michael Ward and were later pointed out to fellow members of the hiking group. Eric Shipton quickly got high quality photographs of the prints, while placing down his ice pick next to it to show off the length and width of the incredible find. Many skeptics had argued the authenticity of the footprint, but research analysis have found anatomically correct details so perfect that it would have been impossible to fake. The footprint showed that the big toe of the creature appeared to be at the perfect size and volume one would see in a creature of a massive size, especially one needed for adequate balance, and the depth of certain areas of the footprint showed a correct distribution of weight that the hikers would never have been able to accurately reproduce. Today the photograph is seen as one of the most compelling pieces of evidence of the Yeti creature, and even helps to shed light into its weight, size and evolution. At the height of the Yeti craze and the fascination the public had on the strange and elusive creature, the Daily Mail worked to gather their own evidence and make cutting edge reports on finding the creature themselves. After only three years since the photographs were taken by Eric Shipton, the Daily Mail sent out an expedition team on the 19th of March in 1954 to go to the same area the hikers had discovered the compelling evidence of the creature and begin their research into uncovering the truth of their creation. The research team found strange evidence of the native population having symbolic paintings of the Yeti, as well as myths as to what it could be, with many of the locals even claiming to have seen the creature on their hikes. When the mountaineering leader John Anglo Jackson made the trek up the mountain, he photographed overwhelming evidence of different unidentifiable tracks of flattened footprints from what appeared to be a large biped. These photographs, however, paled in comparison to the evidence the research team would soon uncover in their efforts to prove the existence of the creature. As they further investigated local myths and legends amongst the population at the base of the mountain, it appeared that as the locals warmed up to the researchers' inquiries, 
they began to reveal to them evidence they have gathered of the creature on their own. The researchers were then taken to a monastery in the region, and were told by those who lived there that they was in possession of the removed scalp from one of these creatures. The monastery then allowed the researchers to take the scalp back home for further scientific examinations, and these were made by Dr. Bierswas. The doctor found conclusive evidence that the scalp belonged to no known animal at the time of its findings, and that it was not taken from an ape or bear anywhere in the region. Unfortunately, DNA could not be taken from the specimen, as an unknown individual had the scalp completely bleached, and all that remains of the scalp are a collection of cut up hairs that can only be examined microscopically. The combination of these expeditions and scientific theories would launch the Yeti, also known as the Sasquatch, into popularity as many believe that the creature could have similar intelligence to humans, given its elusive nature and that the creature was an undiscovered species all across the world. These expeditions would not hold the only gathering evidence, as throughout the United States video evidence of the Sasquatch creature would continue to grow. Noted as being the longest film footage of the Sasquatch creature, the Marble Mountain Wilderness video has been the focus of a wide variety of study, recreations and debate regarding the validity of the evidence, and the overwhelming answer that it provides. The video is roughly 7 minutes in length, and provides striking evidence of a humanoid shape atop a nearby mountain ridge. It seems to possess elongated forearms, a large build and stands human-like in appearance. The footage itself is regarded by Sasquatch specialists as a Class A sighting, which means that the sighting is described as being a clear sighting in circumstances where misinterpretation or misidentification of other animals can easily be ruled out with greater confidence. This means that without a doubt the creature seen in the footage is definitely not any animal of any known kind, of which is a common explanation that skeptics attempt to use to explain away encounters with the Sasquatch and usually state it's nothing more than a bear sighting. An interesting fact to note is that the evidence of this footage was so compelling that the television show Finding Bigfoot dedicated an entire episode to the 7 minute footage, and spent months recreasing each shot and measuring out the size and shape of the sighted creature, to prove its incredible stature. After all this was carried out it was said to be evidence of an authentic Bigfoot, they found the footage was not edited in any way, and when the Finding Bigfoot team recreated the shots, it was uncovered that the creature would have stood at roughly 4 feet taller than their tallest cameraman, a size which came out to be approximately 10 feet tall. Further measurement analysis of the footage also shows that at one still frame, the creature can be seen extending its left arm out the entire way. It comes out to roughly 60% of its entire body length, 6 feet long in total. This percentage is seen in apes and monkeys, making its entire arm span 120% of its entire body length, much longer than any normal human ratio. It could very well be that this piece is not only overwhelming evidence of the existence of the Bigfoot creature, but that it also provides useful measurements and physiological information about the creature for further study for Bigfoot experts. Space no longer seems unreachable for humans. Walking on the moon is arguably one of our most impressive feats. Various researchers have said that in order to carry on, we need to look to the stars and start exploring other planets. Since venturing into space thousands of images have been taken, some of which show important details of planets, moons and asteroids, and others which are blank. However, within this vast collection are some that have stood out, and this is because those that have looked at them have struggled to explain what they're looking at. One such photograph was shared back in 2015, but not many people know about it. One of the first places to feature the images were various UFO websites, stating that it possibly showed a disc-shaped UFO hovering above the moon's surface. According to UFO researchers, they say the moon is of particular interest to UFOs, and have even gone as far as saying that these UFOs use the far side of the moon. This is the side that doesn't face the Earth, and they do this in order not to be seen by us. 
NASA and other officials have said these are just theories, and that there's never been any proof to suggest that UFOs are on the moon. But believers use photographs like this to suggest that there's more happening on the moon than what we're being told about. Although many would dispel the notion that intelligent alien life exists elsewhere in our galaxy, there are a number of theorists that not only believe that alien life is here, but that such extraterrestrials have already established vast research bases on our planet, for the sole purpose of studying the human race like a pack of lab mice. Many people falsely believe that sightings of UFOs have only spawned in the modern era, due to science fiction movies and other similar popular culture references in the mainstream. This is far from the truth, as ancient accounts of alien activity and unidentified flying objects exist all throughout history. As of today, not much information can be gathered about this strange object seen hovering above the moon's surface. One person at the time suggested that it's actually an optical illusion, and from our perspective it looks like this object is hovering when it isn't. But others debunked this idea and said you can clearly see that something is there and it's not making contact with the moon. Even astronauts themselves have come forward and told stories of strange objects that they've seen in space. One of the most influential American heroes of the 1950s, as well as the key figure in helping to locate a number of nuclear sites all around the world, was that of Major Gordon Cooper. Gordon Cooper has been a part of a number of top secret missions in space, with several revolving around the use of highly advanced technologies. During one of his many space missions, he claimed to have come into contact with an extraterrestrial craft. During Gordon Cooper's space mission that included a solo journey with a planned 22 orbit trip around the Earth, he claimed to have seen a glowing object that appeared to be bright green slowly approach his spacecraft, and this happened as he viewed it through the porthole. Additionally, the approach of the object was also picked up by the Machia tracking station, which can be found in the town of Machia in Australia, confirming Cooper's encounter. This would lead to the astronaut eventually agreeing to take on a two-day mission, in which he would work to analyse footage and evidence of extraterrestrial visitation of the planet, that would eventually lead him to giving a speech at the United Nations to discuss his findings. During his speech, he described later coming across evidence of extraterrestrial crafts, gathered evidence of enormous aircrafts as well as stating the following. I saw with my own eyes a defined air of ground being consumed by flames, with four indentations left by flying objects which had descended in the middle of a field. Beings had left the craft. There were other traces to prove this. They seemed to have studied topography. They had collected soil samples, and eventually they returned to where they'd come from, disappearing at enormous speed. End quote. It's estimated that thousands of unidentified flying objects are reported every year, and although it's suspected that a large majority of these can be easily explained, whether that's as natural phenomena, wildlife such as birds, the military, weather balloons or drones, some have said that a few of these UFO reports are hard to explain. But what happens when these strange crafts are photographed on things like the moon and other planets? The list of possible explanations suddenly becomes shorter, Regardless, space agencies have said they've never seen a photograph which has caused them to label it as an unidentified flying object. One interesting story comes from Nikola Tesla, and this happened when he was working with radio equipment. Though its influence in history has been astounding, the small broadcast device we know is the radio has not been around for very long. In fact, its inventor Nikola Tesla did not first conceive of the device until 1885. Despite the young age of the device, it was made apparent that Mr. Tesla was far ahead of his own time when coming up with its invention, being the only inventor of his time to be made aware of the electromagnetic spectrum and the ability to tap into its power and uses. Oddly enough, Tesla wrote extensively in his notes that when he made the first radio capable of receiving and broadcasting a signal, as soon as he turned on the device, he could already hear another person's voice on the other side. He would later go on to claim that people transmitting him a signal were those of beings living on the surface of Mars, 
and that they were attempting to make first contact with him. This was only made more eerie as Nikola Tesla wrote that this voice was that of a man calling out his name, saying Tesla 123 over and over again, before the signal cut out entirely. Many researchers speculate that this signal could have been nothing more than background radiation misinterpreted, and could have been caused by a solar wind of the sun. However, many believe that perhaps something far more creepy could have been going on in the background. No explanation for this strange occurrence has been provided, and still many more speculate that perhaps Nikola Tesla made contact with something not quite human, ranging from extraterrestrials to time travellers. Various theories have been put forward on trying to discover the route of Nikola Tesla's first received broadcasts. Time travel is an interesting topic. There's various stories floating around online of people who claim to have time travelled. Although these stories are interesting and they make you think about the future, scientists have said that none of them are true. They are all made up, and that there's no evidence that anyone has ever time travelled. Regardless, this hasn't stopped people from coming forward with their stories of time travel. One time traveller who wishes to stay anonymous came forward and detailed what they saw in the future. They said that they worked for a government project that selected a few individuals to be part of a top secret mission. The man didn't go into detail about the project, but said that during the process the candidates were kept in the dark in regards to what the mission was about, and didn't find out until last minute that they would be part of a group that would time travel. The only credentials he listed was that he was high up in the military, had dedicated his life to their services, didn't have family and didn't have any children, saying that this was one of the requirements needed in order to be part of the team. The man detailed that energy never leaves the universe, and that once it's out there it can still be seen if you have the correct machinery. The device that allowed him to time travel would lock onto these clusters of energy that were floating around in the universe, and in turn the machine would turn them into moving images. He also detailed that there was another machine that would allow you to travel forwards in time, or at least see events that would play out in the future. He said the following, Many time travel claims may not be wrong, because what I may have seen on one timeline may not match up with what someone else has seen on another. There's countless possibilities that could happen to our universe in the future, and when we lock onto these cosmic energies, we are just seeing one possibility out of an infinite number of possibilities. End quote. The man detailed that our future doesn't look bright, or that the timeline in which he saw doesn't look good for humanity. He detailed that mass famine will spread across the world in the next 100 years, and that freedom will be virtually non-existent. He details that this doesn't plan out in the way that many people think it would, saying that there's not a horrible leader, but rather the vast majority of humans voluntarily give up their freedom without knowing. He said that doing basic things in the future will be tough for the majority of humanity, also noting that the human population levels out at around 10 billion people. He says that by 2150, 4 billion people will be very poor, and will struggle to drink and eat. He said that there will be an overruling one world government, that will lay out plans to help these people live, but in doing so the majority of their freedom will be given up because they can't afford to own anything. The man ended by saying this is just one outcome he saw, and that it doesn't necessarily mean that it will come true. Regardless though, he did warn that if we stay on the same path we're on, it will greatly affect humanity in the long run. Other alleged time travellers have said that the future they've seen will not benefit the majority of humanity, and that we need to change our ways. Online users have heard these stories have given their opinions, with some believing them while others have said they're just stories. One online user said the following, This part of me that wants to believe that time travellers are real, but then the other part of me doesn't want to believe this happens. Part of me also thinks that these people may be part of the top 1%, and that they're sending a warning out to us. 
but using the disguise as being a time traveller so they don't out themselves. I've heard a few of these time travel stories, and some of them detail the same thing. Perhaps it's someone trying to warn us about the future, and that they're trying to open our eyes to what's going on before it's too late. End quote. Well, this person doesn't buy into the idea that people can time travel, saying the following. Although I like to hear these kinds of stories, to me they're just fiction. It's just someone making up stories for entertainment purposes. End quote. Scientists have said in regards to time travel, that although evidence of this being able to occur in our universe is yet to be proven, according to the efforts made in understanding gravitational waves and the warping of space and time, Einstein came across a strange revelation when it came to understanding the nature of distance in the universe. It was originally believed in classical physics that the shortest possible distance between two points was that of a straight line drawn between both points. However, Einstein challenged this idea by noting that the very fabric of space and time could be warped and bent, meaning that the shortest distance between two points is rather the two points being directly folded on top of each other. His analogy was often compared to a worm and an apple. Rather than going around the surface of the apple to get to the other side, the worm could burrow through the apple, creating a hole in the surface and appearing directly on the other side. It's of no surprise then that this theoretical tear through the fabric of space and time is referred to as that of a wormhole. This means that if properly achieved, movement across the universe could be shortened to something known as instantaneous transportation. This means that rather than travelling any distance whatsoever, theoretically one would have to travel no distance at all, and would seemingly appear at the desired location at any distance across the universe. Once the mechanisms for how such a movement is achieved, it would be possible that to travel between planets, we would not even have to exit the atmosphere to appear on the other side of the universe. When you think of Hawaii, you may think of pristine beaches, marine wildlife and palm trees, but one thing that may not come to mind is that of mysterious flying objects. For the last few years, residents of Hawaii have reported strange objects in the sky, with some noting that some of the strange looking craft seem to emerge from the oceans, only to fly off at incredible speeds. This has created an interesting discussion, with some theorising that these objects may be some type of hyper-advanced aircrafts, while others have said they could belong to the military, and that they may be carrying out experiments close to the region. In recent years though, various individuals have come forward with their stories, detailing that one craft that's often seen around Hawaii is that of a large rectangle, stating that it's black in colour and is able to hover motionless without making a sound, and has been seen on a number of occasions making a quick exit. The black rectangle has been captured on camera, although as with many sightings capturing clear footage of it seems to be a challenge. The craft is often seen hovering high in the sky and during the night time, which makes capturing it difficult. Although other residents have said that it's also been seen flying close to the ocean, as if it's scanning the waves and looking for something. One resident was able to capture a photo of the strange craft from their car, and then upload it online. Many users said they weren't aware that this craft was being reported by locals, but did say that similar looking objects had been seen by people in different countries and said that perhaps these crafts could be linked, further noting that different shaped crafts also share the same abilities as this craft, with one of the most well-known ones being that of the Black Triangle. But as of right now though, it's not known where these crafts are coming from and who owns them. One user said the following about the photo. To me, it looks like this craft is partially cloned, a common theme with these types of sightings. These crafts are being seen more often, and to me I wouldn't be surprised if more of these types of photographs will be released in the future. While another user said this, It's not just Hawaii where these objects is being seen. 
I live in Brazil and it's not uncommon to see this shaped craft. Many residents here in Brazil have seen these things, but no one knows what they are. They are sometimes seen being followed by black helicopters, but again very rarely does this make the news. One user said they often visited Hawaii during their time in the military, and went on to detail some of the strange things they saw while out there. Although they didn't see the strange black triangle, they did go on to note that they saw various different flying crafts, and that they were told not to talk about them or ask any questions. As for what the craft is that people are seeing, some have said it could be a top secret military aircraft, others have said that it's an unidentified flying object, or some have said it matches the description of a USO, or an unidentified submerged object. Many people have heard of unidentified flying objects, but many may not be aware of unidentified submerged objects. These are unidentified flying objects that are seen in and around oceans, with some people even claiming that they've seen these crafts entering the water without making a splash. It's not just random people who have reported seeing these crafts either. People in the military have seen these large UFOs enter the water without making a sound, and even reported them staying under the water for several hours. It's these types of reports that have caused some to think that there's bases under our oceans, and that these crafts are using them, and that perhaps they could be part of something much bigger. These USOs are reported to look very similar to that of UFOs, and it's caused some to question whether the two are different, or whether normal UFOs have the ability to go underwater without being detected. As mentioned earlier, people who live in Hawaii, and who have seen this mysterious craft have also said that they're normally accompanied by mysterious black helicopters, noting that shortly after this strange black rectangle is seen, various black helicopters seem to come out of nowhere, and patrol the region. These black helicopters are not anything new, with amateur researchers saying they first started appearing during the 1970s, although some have said that they were reported before this. They are most commonly seen during sightings of unidentified crafts, and those that have looked into them have said they belong to a secret branch of the military that looks into mysterious happenings. They were seen during the 1970s when cattle disappearances were being reported, from then on, amateur researchers have said they're often seen following mysterious crafts, and help aid in clean-up operations that are being hidden from the general public. Black helicopters have also been blamed for interrogating individuals that saw or photographed strange flying crafts, with witnesses saying that they've been harassed by these helicopters weeks after the sighting. As of right now, it's not officially known who owns these, and what their true purpose is, but due to them showing up around strange activity, it's caused individuals to label them as part of a secret black project. Although this strange rectangle craft isn't seen that often, residents who live close to Hawaii have said that it shows up every so often. For years now, people have been seeing a variety of strange crafts in our sky, many of which are quickly debunked and forgotten about. In recent years though, the general public has been shown that there could be more to these sightings than what officials are letting on. Pilots and other professionals have come forward and shared their stories, saying that they don't know what they are, and have been warned about talking about them. Although some users have said that we're heading in the right direction, others have said that we have a long way to go until we're told about some of the truths of our world. So what do you make of this interesting craft? Do you think it belongs to the military? Or is it perhaps something more mysterious? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comments section below, and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.
Thank you. 